One, two, chuff, chuff, one, two. Chuffy, chuffy, one, chuffing, two. This is my sound test. Hi, you're with Scott. Oh, I'm just going to do this. I should do this one. And I don't need to do all that chuff. It's Sunday. Usually I have this thing on the screen. It's saying test stream now, but it actually says this one. Or like, hey, hey you. Like this, look. <laughs> hey, you. Like that. Put that up on the screen. Hey, you. And I wave it around and I beckon you in. And if you're hovering over that on YouTube, on your thumbnail, hovering over it, you'll be like, oh, what's that? That is interesting to me. Hey, you, that's me. And you, now if you're watching, you don't need this anymore. It's done. You've already been drawn in. <laughs> You've already been drawn in. You've been coerced. That's in the bank. That's safe. That's yours. That's safe. That's later. All right, let me check the sound so that I can hear that you can hear anymore. It's done. You've already been drawn in. <laughs> You've already been drawn in. You've been coerced. That's in the bank. That's safe. That's yours. That's safe. That's later. Okay. What we're doing today, of course, we are picking up on the body language of this lady. This lady's Jade. If you didn't see the previous episode, it was all herky-jerky. The internet's fixed now. No more herky-jerky stream. That's great. So I've got the previous episode that it was a body language analysis and it was all herky-jerky. So I saved it on the hard drive while I was streaming it. And at the end of today's episode, I'm going to get the both episodes, chuck them together on the editing software, chop out all the chuff, make a nice little edit of it. So you've got all the body language in one video. This is part two. If you want to know the full story of what's been going on, go and watch part one. I can't be asked to say. <laughs> uh, no, what's happened is that this lady, Jade, has accused another person, Martin Leeker, and they're both in this Tartaria community. They both have websites, YouTube pages. They both have YouTube pages where they promote a load of nonsense to try and get people to give them money, clicks, views. That's the bottom line. She's in it for herself. She's greedy. I've already assessed 20 minutes of her already, so I've already got a bit of an opinion. She's going to go on to back up and validate that opinion here in this video. And uh, I'll do the body language analysis. That's basically it. I will repeat myself a couple of times because there's another 20 minutes and she repeats herself a few times. But the bottom line is, she met this guy, Martin. She looks up to him in the Flat Earth community. He's got all the success that she wants. She looks up to him in the Tartari community. He's got all the subscribers. And he tells her that his subscribers are rich and they give him money. So she's into that. She wants that. That's what she wants. She's living in a crappy van that she can't afford. And she wants to do up her van, travel around the country, seeing people that she knows, maybe... Um, I don't think she's got many friends, but family. And she wants to do that on Martin's dime. So she's gone to Martin. They met up. They met each other. And... Uh, they were chatting, you know, chatting as you do, late night or whatever it was. I don't know, it's some sort of house party thing. This is her testimony. And she had the idea, she thought, it was her idea she's trying to claim to go on a tour. Martin's already written a book. He's already done conferences. Apparently, this is her idea to do a tour. And so she's done all the work, apparently. And Martin's ripped her off, gone on the tour, taken the money with some other woman, and she's been left with nothing. It's all a load of rubbish, her end, what she's saying. It's all a load of rubbish. Uh, what she wanted was to, oh, there's Martin Leeker. He's got all the popularity. He's got the subs. I want to go around the country in my van. I want to go to York. I want to go to Scotland. I haven't got the money to get my van up to Scotland, and I've got the money to fix it. But if I can convince Martin that we're doing a tour together, then we'll turn up at these places and do these little tour things. And that's good for, you know, I'll get money from that. I'll take half of the money from that. And then also I get to go there, and they'll pay for the petrol and pay for the van. And that's what I wanted anyway. Tour or no tour, she wanted to go touring around in her van. Tour or no tour, she wanted to go up to Scotland in her van. So now she's found a way to get somebody else to pay for it. And when it didn't work out, and when the money didn't go as well as she hoped, when somebody else actually managed to grab hold of the bag, this other shadow figure, India, from Holistic Media, who seems to have set them both up. When that happened, she's turned on Martin Leeker, and suddenly he's a predator. Suddenly he's, uh, well, we'll see what she says about him. We'll see what she says about him. But suddenly he's some kind of predator. She's turned on him. She's made it all about how he's a bastard and she's been left with nothing. She wants her money. I don't think she deserves any money personally. I don't. If you set up a business, an actual proper business, like let's say you and I want to set up a book tour and you think I'm the big draw because I've written a book and you're going to do all the work and drive the van or whatever you think, yeah? And we go on this book tour and at the end, we've got a bank account and I spend all the money on truffles. You can say, what the hell did you do that for? And I can say, well, did you get a contract? Have we got a bank account? Have we got a bank, like a business bank account? Have you set up a limited company here? Or are you just running around in your van grabbing cash? That's not a business. Are you a sole trader? Are you a sole trader? Have you done your accounts? Have you invoiced me? No? Well, if none of that, then you can just fuck off, 
Small claims court won't accept your hearsay. He said, she said bullshit. So if you want, you know, you can do things. It's ro it would feel wrong. It would feel rotten on a handshake to rip someone off. Me personally, I felt aggrieved sometimes in the past where I've had a handshake and I felt like I've been ripped off. You know, that's happened. I write those people off. I don't make videos about them on YouTube. And the reason she's doing the video is because she wants money, she feels aggrieved, and uh, she keeps going on about it. And also to protect other women from this dangerous Martin, <laughs> which is ridiculous because she didn't feel that she needed to protect other women from the dangerous Martin until the money ran out, did she? In fact, she was putting women in with the dangerous Martin on the tour. She was inviting people to go on the tour. She was promoting selling tickets so they could go and hang out with the dangerous Martin. So, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't get a good vibe from her. I find her easy, easy, easy. See my T-shirt. See my T-shirt. That's from Soccer AM way back. If you know what, if you know what I'm talking about, I find her to be easy. Not easy on the eye. Not easy on the ear. Maybe easy in the van. But her body language analysis is a stone cold. Uh, she's a deceiver. She's manipulating, and there's lots of reasons that come through to sort of back up what I'm saying. So that was last episode, I did all that. And we're going to continue this episode. There's loads more of it. I've got the relaxing music of Stardew Valley in the background. So that's going to keep me relaxed. Because I find this a little bit stressful. I don't enjoy this. You know, I'm not in this to get into the, the who's highs and what's of their business, really. I don't like seeing people being bullied online. So when I can see something obvious like this, I'm going to call it out. She's a bandwagoner. She's a schoolyard bully who is this kind of girl who might grab you and say, oh, did you hear that so-and-so said this? And then try and get you involved in her shit. She's this like horror show of a person, in my opinion, from my, my simple analysis of her behavior. I don't like it. It makes me feel, ugh. So during this, and we're doing, in our on our channel, we've done a bit of the Tartaria, looking at the conspiracy theories having a laugh about some of the funny ideas. Then we thought it got a bit more serious because we thought some of these people are manipulating their audience to try and gain money, basically. And they don't care how their audience feel and what's good for their audience is mental health. So I get, I find that a bit sinister and a bit, bit horrible. But then that is the same as buying Coca-Cola. You know, Coca-Cola don't care about your teeth, <laughs> do they? That is the same as, uh, as the, the capitalist structure of advertising, marketing, demand creation. It's very similar. This is a little bit sinister because it's playing on people's vulnerabilities. So is marketing, I suppose. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, but I find what she's doing even more sinister because she's found the most vulnerable and, uh, well, not the most vulnerable, so to speak, but she's found, she's doing a bigger thing. She's doing a more malicious con on a more personal level. That's what she's doing, in my opinion. So because that all makes me feel a bit, ugh, and we're covering it because we just, happened to cover it because we were doing oh isn't, isn't this video funny isn't this i'm a variety streamer i stream a variety of content we'll be looking at prisons we'll be looking at um comedy from the 1970s we'll be looking at uh, you know you, you name it we'll do a bit of it i play games on twitch play all sorts of indie games i love the indie games they make us think yesterday we played one called one night stand and it was a game about what it's like to have a one night stand and wake up and not know what the person's name is and it made us think we had a chat so i do all sorts of stuff so you know, if you like this sort of stuff, it might come back around again, a bit more body language. If you like the, the drama of death, that might come back around a bit more because I feel like I'm an independent person with no iron in the fire. So I can actually, you know, sort of cast my, you don't have to agree with me. It doesn't matter to me. Think what you think. If you think she's brilliant, that's up to you. I don't hate you for that. Don't hate me for not liking her. It's just different opinions, uh, ideas. You know, we're not ideas. Are we? We're just, we're, we're what we do. We're our actions. We're not horrible thoughts <laughs> oh god well anyway look because uh, she makes me think oh <laughs> uh, and so with all that in mind i've also got five top tips to transform your garden what what are you on about five top tips to transform your garden in time for spring summer what well you know this is a lovely sunny day you might actually be out there today in the garden you might watch this later on youtube this is something to relax me, <laughs> to make me feel happy again when these people and their rubbish starts making me feel, Ugh. and that's what I kind of suggest. I don't think you should be watching endless conspiracy videos on YouTube. If the earth is round, great. If the earth is a fucking triangle, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make any difference to you tomorrow, whether you have to go to work or not. Let's say I wake up tomorrow. It's the big news on the, on the telly. Turns out the earth is a, is a triangle. Well, uh, does that cook my dinner for me? Does that put food on my table? No doesn't do shit all for me. 
I'm not navigating the seas. I'm not flying around it in a plane. I'm not off in a rocket to Mars. <laughs> I'm living a normal, mundane life like most other people, trying to pay the bills, you know, trying to get through from week to week, nine to five. You know what I'm saying? I'm not some millionaire. I'm not Elon Musk. So to me, I'm not sure it would make a difference in my life if the Earth was a chuffing dodecahedron or an isosceles triangle or a... Do you know what I mean? I wake up tomorrow and they say, it turns out the Earth is a tube like a chuffing toilet roll. So what? So what? It's not going to change a difference to me. The only people that it makes a difference to, this sort of conspiracy thing, the flat earth, the Tartaria, the only people it makes a difference to are the people that run YouTube channels, sell books, get views, get money, go on tours, start tours, get excited about the tours and the money. That They're the people that it makes a difference to because they're profiting from the idea. That's the bottom line, isn't it? So they want to push as much nonsense into people's brains and also the most silly people the most daft people that fall for that nonsense they're the ones that you want because they're your, your big spenders they don't think so much and when they do think they go down this funny rabbit hole and you can control them that's my, my view you don't have to agree on it it's fine I don't, don't hate you you know i don't mind we can all have different views i explain my views quite clearly i articulate them i'll give you evidences show you the ins and outs of why i think that and if you don't agree so what that's okay you can spend your money how you want I find things to be distasteful and sinister, I call them out. And you can spend your money how you want, and we don't have to hate each other. The most important thing for this, I think the most important thing that we should realise, is that we're human beings, and we have a lot in common. We've all gone through a lot of stress, a lot of struggle. The world's difficult for all of us. If The most important thing for me that I find so frustrating about all this, is that this sort of bullshit confuses you from the really important things. They're making us hate the masses when we should hate the masters. And in the mirror, I'm a fucking transformer. So now a leader, join the struggle. Brothers and sisters with your body doubles getting slaughtered. It's time to stand up for your sons and daughters. The important thing is we're all humans and we're all suffering because they, the great powers that be, it's not about whether they're trying to confuse you about the shape of the earth. It's about the fact that they're not taxing the businesses properly. That they're making a lot of money on the government bonds and on the... Uh, like Boris Johnson's great friend, the investment banker, has pushed him to do things that have manipulated the markets so his friends can make money. Like Matt Hancock gave all those PPE contracts to all his mates. You know, all this money that the government are creaming off because they managed to get in power. I'm not going to go through the Brexit conversation. That's a totally different conversation. But let's just say Boris Johnson has not delivered all that money from the bus that he promised, has he? And where's, what's happened? They're all right. We're fucked. Yeah? Bottom line, we need to hate the masses. Sorry. Bottom line, they're making us hate the masses when we should hate the masters. Anything bullshit like this that makes you angry at other normal people. If you're angry at someone that's poor that lives next door to you. If you're some immigrant. Uh, this is why I get angry about the immigrant thing that people don't like immigrants. Is Someone comes and struggles just like you. Trying to work a job just like you. Trying to, you know, shouldn't there be enough jobs to go around? Shouldn't there be enough good opportunities? Why do we all have to struggle? Oh, they're taking my job. Well, shouldn't there be enough? No. The people that are actually in charge running the country, the people that are actually in, in power in the parliament, they're not doing a very good job. Things are going to shit down our end. And instead of fighting the people that be, fighting the power, say, I don't want you in charge. I'm going to do something about it. We're all going to get motivated together. Same with climate change. These people should maybe be, you know, protesting climate change, maybe. Or, or making a difference in some way like that. Instead, we're all divided, we're all arguing, and what are we arguing about? The shape of the fucking earth. Like, get over yourselves. There's bigger fish to fry. And we need to come together. And that's not going to happen if we do what I just did, and go, oh, fuck you, get over yourself. Now, it's time to just rise above that shit. I don't really mind what you think about the shape of the earth. People are leaving me lots of comments <laughs> here and on my Twitch trying to explain to me certain ideas about sciences or pseudosciences or whatever it is, right? I've got my ideas already. I went to school. I went to university. I've got certain ideas about the world. It might be I'm fed a load of bullshit, whatever, right? But it doesn't matter to shit to me what someone in the comments on YouTube says. Because I don't get my worldview from internet comments on YouTube. Even if it was Albert Chuffin Einstein writing that comment, I wouldn't know because it'd just be a little face and a name like, you know, Chuffy Chuffington. And I don't know how to verify any of that. So I don't, I'm not going to get in that rabbit hole down there. That's not for me. That's how I live my life. If you want to get, that's fine. It's up to you. You don't have to do that, but that's how I live my life. So 
I'm, I'm just going to try and rise above the whole argument. I've done some debunking, not debunking, just looking at the ideas and seeing what the videos are like and saying my opinion. Right, I've done some videos like that. Other people have got debunking channels. That's not what we do. I'm a, I'm a variety streamer. I'm having some fun. So I think we should rise above. I think if someone's got funny ideas, I don't really... I don't like that they've got the funny ideas and I don't like these people profiting off them. But... It's the people that are watching the videos. I don't hate any of them for thinking the earth is flat or the Tartari. I don't dislike them for that. I think it's a bit daft sometimes, and I sometimes say it's stupid, and that can come across as a bit condescending. But really, I think we're just human beings, and we're being confused all over the show. You know, they want us to buy this kind of car and that kind of toothpaste. We're being confused all over the show. Now, it's this stuff as well, and the real thing that we should be doing is coming together to make the world better on a human level. There's people hungry. It's people that need food banks. Like, I'm in a posh Western country. I live in a country where the richest people, like I go down London, I don't, but you go, if you were to choose to go to London, look at all the, the money and all the stuff, you know, Boris Johnson and his mates are all right, aren't they? They were having champagne parties. I can't afford champagne. There are people around my way that need a food bank. I can't believe we can't fix that, but we've got time to argue about this shit. Anyway. Arguing about the shape of our planet as it burns, says Angie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I implore you, doesn't matter what happens to today's episode, I'm going to now lay into Jade. <laughs> uh, that's the Super Nintendo Switch. I haven't got a game on because I'm on the web browser today. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to lay into Jade a bit. I don't think she's telling the truth. We've been through this in my first chapter. I will give you the reasons why. You don't have to, you know, you can disagree with me. That's fine. Take this as the opinion of a stranger online. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not even going to claim to have any authority or uh, qualification, although I do have a little, little. Not, I don't have a certificate for body language, but I've got a little bit of qualification, a little bit of qualification in certain areas. Um, and, you know, funny enough, I've got a lot of life experience in other areas too, like I was a fully qualified fencing coach and I went to the World Championships for fencing. It's a... Strange little thing, but, you know, it taught me a lot in life and I got to see a lot of different places around the world and meet different people, training people, teaching people. Yeah, you know, it's a really wonderful thing that happened to me in my life. Uh, I was also part of a film crew that made a film about the strongest men in the world and that film went on Netflix, Eddie Strongman. So I spent some time with the world's strongest men. And that was interesting. So I've got, you know, varied and that, that's not my qualification for this, but I'm just telling you. You know, I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm, I've got... I've got uh, perspectives. I don't just sit at home watching videos of cats falling over. Although I do that quite a lot. I do like watching a video of a cat or a child fall over. That's also quite fun. I'm normal. I'm human, just like all of us. Right. Some of these people, so I've got to be careful not to be too harsh. But when someone's going to be manipulative and, you know, when you're going to put up this video, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. Because this video, this stuff, this is the this is the lowest of the low. This is the... Uh, in my opinion, it's even worse than manipulating ignorant people for a bit of cash. This, I think this is even worse. There's something very nasty about this. So let's go. We're going to pick up in Torquay. They're on their tour. We're going to pick up in Torquay. It's given. Me and Martin split that, and that's how it should have been the whole way. Received the money. Uh, that way, but I didn't. I, there was about seven people the whole tour, and every bit of money I had from, like, I was. That's the front, and we ended up in a bar, and Mel was in. All went to way anyway. So the first, right? So that bit where she was saying about money, that was from last episode. She was saying they got some cash, and they weren't supposed to have cash on the door. They were told explicitly not to take cash on the door of the tour because that can't be put through the books. And you could, you know, in most businesses. You want most of this money to go through the books, especially if you're splitting it. So she did have some cash. <laughs> That's what we got up to last time. Night in Torquay. So we're in Torquay now. Me, Mel and Martin all went to a w for a walk down on the front and we ended up in a bar. Excuse me, just one final thing. Night in Torquay. Okay, the last thing I want to say is that uh, if I tap the table too hard and it makes the microphone go... You just tell me on chat and I'll fix it, okay? Because I do tend to hammer that space bar and sometimes it can knock the wires out of the microphone. <laughs> I'll try and be gentle. It is a Sunday and I did stay up till five o'clock in the morning watching Canelo Alvarez and Dimitri Bivol have a lovely boxing match, a lovely punching fight. <laughs> I did stay up late watching that and then I got up to walk the dog and it is a hot day. So 
This is going to fray my temper. I've got five tips to transform the garden to keep me quiet, keep me calm. We've got Stardew Valley. We've got the interesting world. Oh, one final thing I should show you. This is the NLP eyes. We're not going to just use this. This is not like this is a just a start point into thinking about body language. This does not mean if you look to the left, you are lying. If you look to the right, it is true. But it does mean if you construct things in your auditory part of your brain and you construct visuals, you might be making something up. And if you remember things, that's much more a positive sign. So I'll be looking at which direction our eyes go, but I'll also be looking at a gamut of other small tells, little things like a thesaurus of ideas that I've collected over the years. So it's hard to explain one thing and another, but I will explain them as I see them if I can. And Mel was talking to the barman and they were having a night. Nice Just like then. So she's looking into, can, down there at the, sorry, oops. She's looking into kinesthetic, how it feels. Kinesthetic's a funny word, but it's how things feel to do them, actions. So I don't think that necessarily is lying. Walk down on the front and we end Walk down on the front, you see. She actually walking walking kinesthetic how it feels to do something that correlates if she was looking into kinesthetic and she was saying something that didn't correlate with actually doing something i'd say well that feels a bit funny the way it doesn't match up see what i'm saying so i'm not saying she's looking there it means this i'm just checking it against other things that i can verify up in a bar and mel was talking to the barman and they were having a Mel was talking to the barman and then for a walk down on the front and we ended up in a bar and mel was talking to the barman mel was talking to the barman seems okay Right, but then what's going to happen here is she's going to look and they were up and construct an image. So it might be that she's trying to remember Mel talking to the barman and she can't remember exactly what that looks like, so she's constructing that image. If she was remembering it, she'd look up to the right about what she remembered seeing. So I find that troubling. I wonder what kind of image. Is it that Mel was talking to the barman and she remembers something, but she doesn't want it to be the way she... So she's going to tell you a slightly different version of the truth. You know, oh, uh, I wasn't arguing with my sister. We were just having a chat. You know, no, you were you were shouting at her, weren't you? No, I was just, I was just getting passionate and animated. You know, different versions of the same truth. Or maybe it's something so different that, uh, you know, Mel did do something, but that's only the briefest. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the thing that she, I'm going to tell you something, you know, a bit different. Uh, how do I explain that? How would it be? Can I give you an example? Um, let's say your friend's on a diet. And then you walk past and you see them eating a cake. Yeah, you see them eating a cake. And then someone says, did you see your friend eating eating today? Are they still doing the diet? You might look up and say, well, I, I saw them eating, but you don't want to tell them the cake. So you're trying to construct it. I saw them eating something different, a salad, you know? So you might look up and, you know, that might be the way it is. So it might be the, the base premise is okay, but there's something off about what she's saying. And I don't know what it is because, you know, this is all I've got to go on, but there is something off about it. Oh, what? For a walk down on the front and we ended up in a bar and mel was talking to the barman and they were having a nice chat and all right you chuffer marlo don't be a chuffer eh? daddy's on the internet in was absolutely giving the guy daggers and basically wanted to have a fight with this guy because he was talking to mel like mel's not his property but he was acting as if she was and this is all this shaking of the head here as well there's a lot of shaking of the head it might be to affirm that mel is not his property because that's a negative not his property is it a negative? Mel is his property. Mel is not his property. I don't know. There's certainly some... I don't want to... Stress is a different word, but sometimes when you're thinking about things and trying not to say things and uh, constructing what you're saying... Uh, is my mic peaking? It probably is, yeah. It probably is. Good call, Nigel. I turned it right up last night because it was quiet, wasn't it? Good call. Good call. One, two, check, 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 two. One, two. And now when I look back in the edit, the sound's going to change. <laughs> It'll make it even harder for me. That should be okay, though. I've put a noise limiter on it at the very top, so... Thanks very much, Nigel. Um, yeah, she... Uh, and um... She's doing that shaking of the head, which it could... When you've got other thoughts in your mind, and it's... Uh, stressful's the wrong word, but when it's like juggling, you know, like juggling, you're concentrating, you sometimes get... It's, Blinks, eye closes, head shakes, sim symbolic of this like processing going on in your mind. Um, it could be that, or it could be that she's simply shaking her head in opposition of the things she's saying, which is a signal of a lie. <laughs> you know, if you're saying, um, oh, I definitely did that. 
oh yeah I, I i love that you know if you're shaking your head in opposition of what you're saying that that's a, a tell but she's saying something negative so it could be could go along you see sometimes i don't know and i can't just grab that and say that's absolutely this so i want to just make that clear as well i'm going to try and let it run and i'm going to try and only pick out the really big tells because otherwise we're going to be here for six hours but i just wanted to show you the level i'm thinking the fact that not everything means everything and the fact that some stuff really does and then i bring in what else i know and you know stuff like that so we ended up in a bar and mel was talking to the barman and they were having a nice chat and getting along and then martin was absolutely giving the guy daggers and basically wanted to have a fight with this guy because he was talking to mel like there's a little pause there wanting to have a fight with this guy because he's talking to mel and she does this because she's so used to it she's like so used to, that's and, that, and it's going to get worse now when i start making it up and it's going to get worse when i start making it up when she starts looking she drops that first what she does is she says uh, Martin was giving the daggers because he wanted to have a fight like it's like a, a a face of shock to transmit to you that you should there's a minor pause like that's dropping the mic moment boom got him you should also be you know it's like this bloody mean girls thing isn't it it's like chuffing it's manipulation and it's her trying to emphasise this this point that has made her angry which is that Martin seems possessive over Mel. Maybe she thinks Martin should not be possessive over Mel. Why does she think that? Because Martin shouldn't be possessive over women. Or because she's jealous of Mel getting the attention? I don't know what her motivation is in that thought process. But certainly this has caused her some indignation. Absolutely giving the guy daggers and basically wanted to have a fight with this guy because he was talking to Mel. Like, Mel's not his property, but he was acting as if she was. And um, he was getting really angry and I had to literally put me this shaking of the head though it makes me when she said but he was acting as if she was i don't know i don't know again you see i don't trust this lady and i'm finding it hard to trust her her testimony a lot of this is he said she said bullshit which in the johnny depp amber trial would be called hearsay it would not be you know remember she is she's got a vested financial interest in taking down martin the growth of her channel the moving of his subscribers into her subscribers base She's, uh, she's, she's got these other motivations, and uh, yeah, I just talking to the barman, and they were having a nice chat and getting along, and then Martin was absolutely giving the guy daggers and basically wanted to have a fight with this guy because he was talking to Mel, like Mel's not his property, but he was acting as if she was. Um, just to pick up your point there, uh, Noon's Flower, people are not arguing about the shape of the planet, people are rightly pissed off by the lies and frauds of the banks and class yeah um that's what i'm trying to say but I, I know they're not necessarily arguing about the shape of the planet they all think it's the same but like even discussing whether the shape of the planet is relevant i guess in my opinion is not the priority um i don't think if they did try and if they did try and convince us that the uh the planet was a different shape i don't know if it serves any purpose other than to confuse people into worrying about something that's not really Prioritize on, priority on the agenda. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let's get back to, to, to poor Jade. <laughs> because he was talking to Mel. Like, Mel's not his property, but he was acting as if she was. And um, he was getting really angry, and I had to... Li also, there was a little tell there, and it's quite a big tell, right? When people are lying, what I just said earlier about that processing going on in their brain, that processing is happening, that stress, you might slip up, you might get your words wrong. You're more likely to accidentally say a wrong word if your brain is processing fast because you're making shit up. And she does that here, where she says, whiz. She kind of goes, whiz. Mel's not his property, but he was acting as if she was. And, um... Whiz. You see, she's doing that shake of the head and blinking at the same time. At exactly the moment where she says that Martin was acting as if she's his property so this this again it, it feels in disingenuous to me I'm, i can't tell you directly that she's lying but I, I wasn't there but if she was you know if i was the headmaster and i was having to listen to the tea, the kids and this feels like that it just feels like yeah i spotted you along and then martin was absolutely giving the guy daggers and basically wanted to have a fight with this guy because he was talking to mel like mel's not his property but he was acting as if she was and um he was getting really angry and i getting really angry and she raises her eyebrows in what we call the believe me look it's a kind of surprise that she said the lie as well it's a kind of surprise you know just said that can't believe i just said that like because she's making things up on the fly a little bit because she's embellishing stories 
when she says things that she's got this pattern, which is she'll say something factual. We were in the pub. Then she'll push it a bit. And Martin was being a right chuffer. And then she'll say an outright lie. And then that final bit is the bit that surprises her that she said it. And uh, it's not good body language that, although she is looking down into the right, which would indicate auditory digitary thing. It, talking self-talk, this is. This is talking to yourself, things through in your mind. Again, that's what makes me think that she's making shit up. I had to literally put music on the jukebox, try and distract him, try dancing and stuff, and trying to make him, like, stop going on about this guy talking to her. But he wasn't. It was being... Those things sounded a bit more real. The dancing, because she actually danced. You know, it's like she was living through her memory a bit there. That seemed a bit more genuine. This is, like I say, pattern. She does that, and then the next bit's going to be a bit less real, I think. Weird and possessive, and it ruined the night. And then also at Torquay, when I was hanging out with one of the guys on the... Again... We've got Aggressive, and it ruined the night. And then also at Torquay. Uh, also at Torquay, constructing an image. When I was hanging. Down to how you feel about doing things. So something you've actually done here. Hanging out with one of. And then into constructed. <sighs> into constructed auditory, making up shit that you can say or shit that you think you've heard or whatever. It's like this combination thing, isn't it? She's got one shoulder shrugged. That's a negative sign in terms of, believe me, body language. It's a negative, like, it's like maybe. Uh, convincing. She's sort of like spinning up the, the story here again. And I get, I'll tell you what, I just, I'll be honest with you, right? I think what's happened is that she knows that Martin is a bit into her. She knows that. She's gone over to Martin's house. He's given the signals. He's flirted with her. He's not tried it on, like, you know, got in bed with her and, hey, baby, because he's not a sexual predator. But he's tried to be nice to her, tried to develop a relationship with her, that sort of stuff. They're on this fucking tour together, for God's sake. They're in the big flat earth club together. He thinks there might be, you know, something, me and Jade, maybe. Right? Rather than draw a line and make it clear to him that that's not the case, she's played it up because she wants financial gain. She's played it up because she wants them to go around the country in the order that she wants to visit the places she wants to see people. One of the places where, where her family lives. So that's handy for her, isn't it? And then... She's seen some fella that she likes and she's gone over and flirted with him. Yeah. She's gone over, I, I'm not going to just beat around the bush here. I'm just going to say this, right? She's gone over and flirted with some guy. Martin's got jealous. Now, Martin's wrong. I've said this before. Martin's wrong to inflict his jealousy on the group, on her. He can say angrily, look, I thought we were having, you know, a nice time tonight and you're off talking to this guy. Right? That makes me feel, like, let down because... I thought we were developing a relationship and like, if we're not, can you just fucking tell me? I'll stop getting my hopes up. I won't act like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think she's kind of played that up a bit. I think she's kind of played that up a bit. And like, oh, how dare you, Martin? How dare you be protective over me? And, and how dare you have feelings for me that I've, you know, played along with and toyed with, so to speak. So when she tells us this story, she's not going to say, oh, and I went to flirt with this guy and that got Martin well riled up. And then I've got him round my little finger. You know, I can play these men like a fiddle. She's not going to say that, is she? So instead, she's going to say, I was just innocently talking to this. Oh, he was just a chap and I was just innocently talking. I just, oh, my hand happened to fall on his leg. I didn't touch his leg. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, she's not going to say, she's going to say the truth. I talked to this guy, but she's making something up. The way the conversation went or something, you know, I don't know exactly what she's making up, but I think she's changing the tone and context of things which is weird because if you were just talking to some guy in a pub yeah if you just met martin gone on this tour and you're just talking to some guy in a pub martin would have to be some kind of proper fucking psycho to start staring daggers and causing fights and if he did that on like day one or two or three or five of your tour you'd fuck everything off i'm not hanging around with this psycho starting fights in the pub what's going on it seems like Martin would have had to jump to... Now, if you're just talking to some guy in the pub and there's no... It's totally innocent and you're not flirting and you're not leading Martin up the garden path and you're not giving Martin the signals and you're not making Martin think something... You know you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If you're not playing the femme fatale or whatever, then, uh, you know, oh, innocent me, oh, I'm just cute. Ah, I'm 30 years old and I'm cute. Uh, if you're not doing that, then why the hell is Martin getting so cross? Is he that... Do you know what I mean? Or does it take two to tango? Is Martin that, that wound up and like, I don't know what the word you'd say about it is, 
We've got the calm music on, yeah, calm for me, thank you. Is Martin that wound up? If you are getting wound up, then probably give some TLC to your garden tools. Maintain tools with bare wooden handles by applying a thin layer of linseed oil. Ah, oh, that makes me feel better. Right, you see what I'm saying? Like, is Martin getting wound up? And how is he getting wound up? And are you part of winding him up? Because he seems to be getting really fucking wound up. And he's not always like that. I don't see him getting wound up on the on the uh, live streams and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know, you know. She's ambering Martin. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I feel that. It feels like the Amber Heard thing. It really feels like the Amber Heard thing. Um, and she's omitting details of their relationship. Yes, uh, that's it. Yeah, omitting details. That's a really good way of of you know putting a bow around that yeah she's not giving us the full story is she the guys on the tour we were getting on really well when we're at the pub afterwards um we were just chatting and then when he went to the bathroom martin comes over to me slams a drink down on my table and says oh so you're fucking off with him now are you and i like contest this as well because um when she says slams the drink down on the table, I think we did this last episode, actually. Uh, when she says slams the drink down on the table, I think that's another one of these dressing things up bullshit things. Like Martin might have put his drink down on the table. He might have been grumpy. He might have... But the way you say it, Martin slams his drink down on the table. Like now you're creating this image of this monster. And Martin's not a big chuffer. Like you're not a big chuffer either. But Martin's not a big chuffer. Like He's not some um, smash the place up bully I don't think I've not read that into his character thus far but you're giving me this testimony that he's come over like some ogre do you know what I'm saying it, this doesn't feel right it doesn't feel right and you're not giving me any direct like Martin touched me Martin hit me Martin said you should this or that I started recording him because I was afraid none of this stuff like just now after the event now that I haven't got the money I thought I was going to get or wanted to get or trying to screw out of Martin now I'm going to make a play for the whole pie I'm going to absolutely slander Martin. And Martin might have said it in a joking way. I, I, you know, Martin might have said it. He might not have said it. I don't know. I'm not there. So again, for me to just believe her, this is something that I really think people should think into very deeply. They talk about question the narrative a lot. Question the narrative. Why are people not questioning her narrative? Why are people just so keen to believe her? Well, because you've got an ogre and you've got a poor victim. We've created a narrative. I'd question that narrative. So like he was mad that I was speaking to a guy on the tour. Basically that made me nervous after that to talk to any guy. And bear in mind this is heavily edited as well. She's heavily edited this, which feels a bit of an issue. Like it's not terrible, but, may, but most of the time if you're really speaking from the heart and you've got this thing to get out, you don't need to edit it because you say it all, you know, you don't, you don't need to edit it. But there are things that she said during the recording of this that she's felt not appropriate for YouTube, not appropriate for you to hear. Maybe she's you know, said things that she didn't want you to hear. She's took them out. Guys on the tour, like if I saw him, he'd give me a look like daggers. If I ever like even was having a nice chat with someone, if I'd see him in the distance looking, it'd be, it's a look he does. You've seen it on his live streams sometimes. He does this look as if to say, I don't even know what it's to say, but it's daggers. So we arrive in Glastonbury and Martin tells me, um, there's- Bearing in mind all of this that she just said, I'm seeing that body language that I don't like, the shoulders, the eyes, all of that. I'm just not stopping it over and over again because I think we heard a bit of this yesterday. There's no money left at all. And I was horrified. I was like, but you told me three days ago there was £5,000 in the pot and you'd already put £1,000 aside for fuel. So why is there no money left? This is day three of the... This is that aggression again. The hand came up, didn't it? You know, almost like moving things around, pushing, maybe slapping people around. Aggression again. Tour. And he told me basically that India from Holistic Media, she spent a thousand pounds on coffee for the conference that was nothing to do with the tour. She does that thing again, coffee. You know, like oh, it, the reason this makes me so angry is because people like this. I've, I've met people that do this sort of thing before. The coffee, like oh god, you're winding us up. Like, we were just sat here having a nice drink before you came in, and now you're in here like, oh, did you hear what so-and-so said to fucking so-and-so? Oh, well, you won't believe this. She said you're going to pay the fucking money for coffee. Like, getting everyone wound up. And before you know it, like, oh, some bloke's saying, all oh, right, well, I'm going to go around there, and I'm going to fucking sort him out then, and I'm going to fucking do this. Do you know what I mean? Oh, God, give it a rest. It might have worked at school. It might have worked at school, and that's your level. You never escaped that level. <laughs> you never grew up. Something wrong with you, love. Um, so they spent the tour money on coffee for everybody. And and what she's doing here is she's trying to create this 
this idea that they've done something stupid with money. Remember from our last broadcast, she's really angry about the money. It's the money for her. She's angry about people being stupid with money because she thinks that's her money. Because what she did was she managed to get a, set up a con. I'm going to get Martin and his popularity. I'm going to take half of that. I'll say that I'm doing the tour. I'm going to drive my van to where I want to fucking go. They're going to get in my van, go to where I want to go. And I'm going to have half the money. And I'm going to have a thousand pound for petrol. And they're going to pay to renovate the van. And like all this bullshit. Yeah. And then when they start spending it on other things, like food and drink or lodgings she gets angry about it because she doesn't care what they eat she don't care where they sleep what she cares about is keeping as much money for herself as possible um oh holistic media wrote a statement I'd, I'd love to get into that the next step for us after this is to investigate holistic media because i don't know anything about them and i've got a feeling that they are the shadow uh, hand in most of this uh, certainly both parties are saying that holistic media kept control of the money so you know, that's an issue considering Martin didn't know Holistic Media from Adam until a week ago. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's an issue. But again, we've got this, you know, demonstrative, aggressive body language coupled with the constructed visuals, constructed audio, making things up in her head. And uh, she's really trying to drive home these points. And the other point here is that she's trying to say they're stupid, remember? They shouldn't have spent that money on coffee. That was stupid. She's better than them. She's more intelligent than them. She should have done a better job running the thing. Why did these stupid people not do it my way? Uh, you know, if that's the problem with your business, walk away from the business. Um, if that's, uh, you know. Did you retract your message? You don't have to retract messages here. It's okay, I'm not going to delete anything and I'm not going to, you know. Um, what's the word? I'm not going to censor anything really unless it's horrible so <laughs> holistic media she spent a thousand pounds on coffee for the conference that was nothing to do with the tour um so they spent the tour money on coffee for everybody and they also spent 600 pounds of the tour money on books for martin to sell at the tour so basically for martin to make a profit again so they sold basically what was owed to me from the whole thing they they, they got rid of it all on coffee and books so martin so this is a bit of an issue because if they are involving the tour in the financial interest of this business, again, it goes right back to the start of did you make a business plan? Did you get a business bank account? Are you a PLC? Are you directors? You know, what, what is the nature of your business? And if they're being businesslike and folding that in and you don't want that in, you're either a business or you're not. And they're not. They're not. They're a group of not even friends. Let's be fair. They're a group of online the, the, the thing they've got in common is they share youtube and they share a similar style of content on youtube they have a similar group of subscribers the similar subscribers overlap that's what they've got in common she's a lot smaller than martin leaker and uh that i mean are they friends now certainly this hasn't ended in in friendship this is all ended acrimoniously hasn't it so um oh it's a misspelling don't worry don't worry about your typos i I say it's the keyboard missing out letters, but quite often I spell things badly myself. None of us are grammarly, are we? So <laughs> uh, that's just human. And it's more and more common online because we're more and more typing things fast. So I, I find I get pedantic about, oh, you said this in the comments and look at your grammar. But still, I did think to myself, look, that could have just been someone on the bus and the, just the bus went like that when they typed the thing. I don't know. You know, let's not get picked picky <laughs> well i'm going to be really picky about jade um apparently holistic media allowed martin to use their payment portal said they didn't buy coffee but loaned martin for books yeah you see now again we're saying that she said this thing about coffee is it true i don't know she's just saying things has she got any evidence is she showing me any books because if she's in a business she can just show me the books uh and are we expected to believe jade why why should we believe jade why is her narrative the truth is it because she's so wholesome and good? She's been so wholesome and good. Her whole YouTube channel is full of wholesome, good things, isn't it? Mental health advice and charity stream. and No, it's not that. It's not that. That's not what she's doing. That's not who she is. So I don't feel compelled to believe her just because I feel that she's pulling the victim card. Oh, poor me. I'm not going to white knight it just because she's a victim little girl. She's a 30-year-old grown woman who's made her own way in life thus far. She's quite capable. She set up Martin Licky for the fall, didn't she? So, uh, yeah, again, that's a good point. Um, so, Holistic Media are saying this is not true. They're contradicting her, her view. 
Amber Heard, Johnny Depp both said different things, didn't they? But the truth was, on the recording, a bit different from what both of them said in a way. Um, I just think that, uh, far be it for me to assume she's telling the truth, but I actually don't assume she's lying. I'm just trying to see what I can read into what she's saying. And she's going to tell us things. And if you just believe the things that she tells you, that's wrong, isn't it? You're supposed to question the narrative, so. I told me India did that without permission. And I... And also, it's not that India did it without permission. It's that Mark... It's that Mark... All right, Marlo, it's okay. Marlo, there's nothing happening. It's not that he did it without permission. It's that Martin told me India did... It's that Martin told me India did it without permission. She's laying it at Martin's door again. India might have done it, might not, but Martin said that India did. Now Martin is stabbing India in the back, she's telling us. As she stares wildly into her constructed... <sighs> constructed visual part of her brain. Uh, tools which have become blunt through lack of use can be sharpened using a fine metal file. I never thought to do that. I don't want the metal filings in the garden, do I? Oh, I suppose they might be all right. Upright. I haven't got a metal file. The handles of garden mowers should be oiled and loosened to prevent them from seizing up. I cut the grass with scissors because I find... I've only got a small patch of grass, but I do it with scissors because I find it relaxing. <laughs> it takes longer, but you get the smell of the grass and you get your hands in it and it's relaxing. That makes me feel better. Right. Let's get back on with this. Obviously went ballistic at this point. I was like, this lady's withholding the money and now she's- Oh, oh, I obviously went, hang on, what? They, they, they got rid of it all on coffee and books. So Martin told me India did that without permission. And I obviously went ballistic at this point. You went ballistic at this point. I didn't think that was like you, Jade, to start flying off the handle, going ballistic. That sounds like quite an aggressive thing, going ballistic obviously went ballistic as well because we would all go ballistic wouldn't we you yourself when you learned that someone had not been that frugal with the money in your business that's not really a business but when you learned that someone had not been that frugal with the money that you want to get your hands on you would go fucking ballistic wouldn't you I mean it's the same as raping a child isn't it I shouldn't have said that <laughs> that I got picked up on the YouTube flag what did he say there what did he say there no but that is isn't it it's terrible it's so bad you should go ballistic or you might just go chuffing hell that's not right is it? That's not right. Should we pull them up on that? If you want, I can start looking into the legal implications. Because we can do small claims court, because we've got a contract that says, you know, we're going to discuss and we're going to make decisions together. So, uh, you know, that's that's over and above her, her role. So we can just pull her up on that. No, no, you would, you'd, you'd fly right off the handle and go ballistic, wouldn't you, Jade? Well, you would. And obviously is a word that's thrown in there by people who want to sort of say to you, you would do this. You're on the same page as me. I'm not wrong to do this. It's obvious that you'd do this. Which is a way of qualifying what she's actually done and making it seem less, less bad than it is. Because she just admitted to going ballistic. Basically what was owed to me from the whole thing. And remember, she thinks it's money that's owed to her from the whole thing. And it's not owed to her from the whole thing. If you have a business... I've said this multiple times in the last episode. I'll say it one more time today and then I'll try and not say it over and over again. But if you have a business, like let's say you and me, we set up a tour business. We go on tour. The money starts coming in. That's good, isn't it? We can pay your expenses for your petrol if we need to. I can give you some money for sandwiches out the kitty. But it's not coming out the kitty. What it's coming out of is I've made a list of expenses that will be acceptable. And if you choose to spend those expenses, you bring the receipts to me because I'm running the accounts. You spend the money first, then you bring the receipts to me, then I give you the money, and I put the receipts in the accounts, and at the end of the year, we add up how much money we've got, and how much money's left after all the expenses at the end of the year becomes our profits. And then we decide, as directors of the company, whether we take a dividend on the profits or whether we're taking a wage. If we decided the wage earlier, we could be paying the wage through the year, that's fine. But you don't just say, right, we've had 20 pound on the tickets, that's 10 pound mine, 10 pound yours. That's not how that works. You don't say, okay, after this couple of tours, we're doing quite well. I'd like to put some new windows in my van. Sorry, you can't. We've got to wait for the profit loss analysis. Now, that's not how business works. You don't just say, that's my money I'm owed. I don't care how many miles you've driven in your van. I don't care. She showed us a little bit of bullshit that she wrote on a copy and paste off the internet. The, 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 the plan. I did the planning. I wrote Monday, York. Tuesday, Doncaster. Wednesday, where does my other 
friendly. Oh yeah, I'll go over there as well. That's where I want to go. That's my plan. Scotland at the end. And each place, I'll just put two paragraphs of some Tartaria bullshit. There we go. Job done. Job done. Planner. I can get someone to do that for £40 for an hour's work. So you're, you're useless. All you're doing is driving a van and you think you get half of the business. You can have half of the business. Go in Dragon's Den. I'll give you 50% of my business for whatever. Yeah, fine. Absolutely. But on that day, the dragons can't then say to you, all right, open up your, what's in your wallet. Can I have, I want half of that money. I'm half the business now. Give me half of your money in your wallet. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Okay, so she's confused about how it works because she's not running a business. She's running a con. She thinks you can gather up the money using Martin as the lighthouse. You can gather up the punters using Martin as the lighthouse. He's an idiot. So she can take as much of that money as she, she can get a grubby mitts on. She won't even give him half. She's going to take an extra thousand for the van. She's going to take extra for this, extra for that. Martin's not really going to get half. And God damn it, if she had the cash in her pocket, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure we only sold five tickets, Martin. I'm pretty sure there were seven on the tour, weren't there? No, Martin, there were five. You know, any of that can go on. It's her con to get the money. She's not running a business. And she's just told you there. She's told you to your face. Spent six hundred pounds of the tour money on books for Martin to sell at the tour. So basically, for Martin to make a profit again. So they sold basically what was owed to me from the whole thing. They they, they got rid of it all on coffee and books. So Martin and she's confused. They didn't sell it. They spent it. Martin told me India did that without permission, and I obviously went ballistic at this point. I was like, "This lady's with." It's funny because she said she went ballistic, but that actually doesn't ring true either. <laughs> permission, and I obviously went. Ballistic constructed again but moving finally over to remembered visual what was that remembered auditory isn't it remembered auditory <sighs> calm calm remembered auditory the calmer i am the better i do this when i get oh i don't like you oh, i feel like hang on i shouldn't be judging these people i should just be doing the body language but i get angry about the ethics so you know it's just how it is realistic at this point yeah, ballistic at this point was true. She ended up looking into the right part of the brain. I was like, this lady's withholding the money and now she's spent it all and left us with nothing because she's buying stupid stuff like coffee for a thousand people or something stupid. What's this? What's this touching you? That doesn't ring right. That doesn't feel good. Bit of self-touching, bit of... What we talk about with lying, uh, often with young children, is the cover... Oh, <laughs> Covering the mouth, doing a bit of that. And of course, because she can't literally cover her mouth because it's like obviously lying, or that quite often they'll pull up their sleeves around their, their hands and thumbs. That's also defensive, but it's like this like want to cover the mouth turns into these other like behaviors when you're lying. Like that happens. I don't like the, the touching of the ear here. Feels like self touching, self confirmation, self affirmation. Um, I said to Martin, can you ring her and sort it out? And he but it's like, so, oh, I'm too scared. It's so brief and it it goes by so quick and she edits it. It's hard to actually use that as a thing. Here, she's squinting her arms. So it's, she's doing this thing where she's basically being angry at Martin for being um, not a strong character. For Martin not wanting to stand up for himself. She implies anger at that. Like It's like implying Martin's a wimp or a, a, therefore not a good or strong man. And it's weird because that's incongruent with her view that Martin's bullied her. So then I did it and being a Sagittarius, I can you ring her and saw it out and he was like, oh, I'm too scared. So then I did it and being a Sagittarius, I got fired up pretty freaking quickly because I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm not getting, I didn't want her to rip any of us off. And she said, I did it and she looked, I think he did it and passed her the phone. So that's again where a lie is the truth, but it's a lie. She did speak, to, I did it, meaning, I, like, no, you didn't. Like, he asked you to do it, he set it up, he did it and you went along like but now you're going to claim that you took all the you took all the you know what's this one it's supposed to be relaxing music mate you took all the credit there i told her to up pretty freaking quickly because i want to get to the bottom of this i'm not getting i didn't want her to rip any of us off i told her to refund the <laughs> uh this is pure this is perfect remember this one okay this is big for these jade fans because a lot of the things they say and a lot of things she says is that she's got other people's interests at heart that's what she's saying. She's doing it for the community. She's doing it for the other women. It's not for her and her money, but she says here, and she stops herself 
because she knows she doesn't want to say that because that's going to make her see she's manipulating it she says i'm not going to get ripped off meaning i'm a tough person i ain't taking any shit it's my money i'm going to that's her a motivation her herself i'm not going to get ripped off she changes it say oh no we 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 i'm protecting us so then I did it and being a Sagittarius, I got fired up pretty freaking quickly because I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm not getting, I didn't want her to rip any of us off. You see, I'm not getting, I, I didn't want to get us, any of us ripped off. See how she's not giving us an honest account. If she was, she wouldn't have to go, I, 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 I'm not, and change mid-sentence. She's deliberately saying things that are not quite true. Can this just play, please? Thank you. She's deliberately saying things that are not quite true in a way that doesn't come across as being genuine. Why has this all gone quiet? I mean, I like the music to be quiet, but very quiet is just rubbish. That's better. So you can see that. That is a good one, isn't it? That's, that's an obvious one. She's buying stupid stuff like coffee for a thousand people or something stupid. I said to Martin, can you ring her and saw it out? And he was like, oh, I'm too scared. So then I did it. And being a Sagittarius, I got fired up pretty freaking quickly because I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm and again, she's fired up pretty fucking quickly. Swearing now, Sagittarius. Obviously, being a Sagittarius doesn't mean you get fired up quickly. Everyone in life gets fired up quickly. Everyone in the world will get fired up quickly about something they find deeply passionate and concerning. If I said to you, someone's stolen your dog, what are they doing with your dog over there? You'd be fired up straight out. I'm not a fiery person often, but if you touch the right nerve, I'm going to come at you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Everyone's got that. You just have to touch the right nerve. With her, it's the money. It's not being a Sagittarius. All these qualities that they are, oh, because you're born under a certain star sign. There's actually 13 stars signs of the Zodiac, but they changed it because it fit better with... If you look into it, it doesn't... Anyway... If you look at it, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, the the point is that she's using being a Sagittarius to excuse her violent outbursts, her aggressive behaviour, and the fact that she won't take any shit and she's in control. Oh, I'm not a cunt. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. Do you see what she's doing? It all and left us with nothing because she's buying stupid stuff like coffee for a thousand people. Or something stupid. I said to Martin, can you ring her and saw it out? And he was like, oh, I'm too scared. So then I did it. And being a Sagittarius, I got fired up pretty freaking quickly because I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm not getting, I didn't want her to rip any of us off. I told her to refund the coffee, cancel it. And um, also to cancel the hotel room. Martin bought me a hotel room for the conference, which I didn't want. Um, she does that face. This is a face I really despise. Hang on just a room. second. Martin bought me a hotel room for the conference, which I didn't want. Um. That one. <laughs> oh, man. You know, she thinks she's better than other people. She certainly thinks she's better than Martin. She certainly views Martin as like a pay pig, as like someone who has got the, the eyes on him. And she can't understand that he, in her mind, she's better than Martin. So why are these people watching Martin? Why are my videos not taking off? I'm doing the same stuff Martin is, and I'm a better person than Martin. So why are my videos not taking off? She doesn't understand that Martin is liked by people because of his personality, because of who he naturally is. That's not what she's, you know, on her, on her thing. She's got this other shit going on with her personality, hasn't she? This manipulation, this tactic, this, you know, using people for things. Like her whole relationship with Martin is about using him for leverage to improve, to improve her lot in life, to go on this tour, to become more popular in the community, to eventually take over, uh, to slander Martin. Why is all this shit going on in her head? It doesn't go on in my head when I'm hanging out with my mates, you know? This, this face of self-satisfaction, of like condescension. It's not good. It's not good. Um, is it possible she was expecting Mike to just take care of her? No, I don't think so. I think she uh, has the capability to stay with people. My guess is she has other people she can stay with. And uh, like, it's no surprise that Martin, who is a predominant figure in this community, and it, it, she'll jump from person. She'll like upgrade her boyfriends. You know, the next person will be an upgrade. 
a step up. She's probably already <laughs> thinking about that now. Uh, she's using people as stepping stones. Um, and I don't think the taking care of her aspect is... Uh, maybe, I suppose. There is something about this that she's treating him a bit like her father in that she's being a naughty girl. You know? And certainly some naughty girls get the attention from their father when they are naughty. And, you know, when you're a kid, getting attention is what you crave. And if you learn that you can get attention, if, if you don't get the good attention, you know, the nice attention, well done. That's good. You're behaving. Well done, Marlo. You're being a good boy. Look, just sliding down there like a good boy. You know, I should tell him he's good when he's good, not shout at him when he's barking. You see what I'm saying? But if I only ever shout at him when he's barking, he's only ever going to bark because he wants daddy to talk to him. So there is an element of that. That is in playing through her subconscious somewhere. Um, I know she lost her father, but we're going to maybe learn a little bit more about that in this episode. So we'll come on to that in a minute uh, when she does. And like I say, I am stopping it an awful lot. What I also find is when I rewatch the episode, I'm going to see things that I've missed. I'm going to go, oh God, I can't believe I didn't say that. I can't believe I didn't say that. It happened last time when I tried to look at the other one back in the edit. So uh, I'll try and let it flow. I'll try and bring out the big important points. But this, she, there's an awful lot just in this bit again. I up pretty freaking quickly because I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm not getting, I, I didn't want her to rip any of us off. I told her to refund the coffee. She's angry, she's aggressive. And remember, this is the person who's being bullied by Martin. Martin's being predatory to her, she's saying. However, she's very controlling, she's aggressive, she's in on the money. Why is Martin not able to stop this if Martin's the big bully predator? How come Martin's scared and asking her to deal with India if Martin's the big bully predator. You can't have it both ways, can you? You can't have Martin being bullying you and pushing you out of the money if he's directly getting you involved on the conversation for the money because he himself is worried about the money as well. You know, you can't have it both ways, can you? Cancel it and um, also to cancel the hotel room. Martin bought me a hotel room for the conference, which I didn't want. Um, but that's very nice of him. I wonder why now. I wonder why now. Well, so that you'd be safe and have somewhere safe to stay while all these, you know, essentially strangers are turning up. And because it's the conference and everyone else has got one and you don't want you to feel left out. I don't know. It's not fair to put funny ideas into Martin's head, is it? It's not fair for us to assume really strange things of Martin, probably because he's a paedophile. No, like that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? You're not guilty until proven innocent. And at the moment, there's not even any aspersion that Martin was like and what so what if Martin wanted to sleep with you Jade so what is that terrible because you've hung around with him you've been his friend hey 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 Mark please just chill out daddy's gonna try and chill he's not gonna get angry um you, you know you've, you've done all this stuff that might make him feel that there's a future in there in your relationship for Christ's sake that's what goes on isn't it between a man and a woman and unless you draw lines and say it's not and unless it's clear I don't know I don't know you know maybe Mike got the wrong end of the stick I don't know but uh, I, yeah, I, I feel that, you know, it's a bit unfair to say Martin got me a hotel room, therefore he's a bad person. He must have been thinking some really horrible shit when he ordered me that hotel room. He didn't make, you, he didn't get a double bed with just you and him, did he? He didn't say, oh, sorry, Jay, there's no more rooms, you'll have to sleep at my bed. Like, he didn't do that. He's not trying to Jimmy Savile you, for Christ's sake. But I was going to just be staying in my van to save money, so I asked her to cancel the hotel room, she'd... Again, I was staying in my van to save money. It's about the money again, isn't it? Booked me for Martin's conference as well afterwards. So Martin thanks me after the phone call and says, you know, he couldn't have done it. He was too nervous. Thank you. He's so happy that we finally might, you know. I don't believe any of this. It's all made up. I don't know what Martin said after the phone call. I believe that she was probably telling him shit. I don't think she hung up the phone and then Martin went, oh, thank you. Oh, I was so nervous. I couldn't do that. I think what happened is she hung up the phone and went, Martin, she's just fucking said this and I fucking think this and now fucking this, this and this and wouldn't stop going ballistic. And he's gone like, oh, I'm sorry. I just tried to, I'm sorry. You know, a bit more like that. This is all... Getting money through again. On the morning of Glastonbury, Martin went into Mel's van to get her, you know, to come along to the tour. And Problems there. Shrugged his shoulders. And to, uh, 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 to get her to come, I don't know what Martin went to Mel's van for, but she's Nervous, not telling the exact you, truth. So happy that we finally might, you know, get money through again. On the morning of Glastonbury, Martin went into Mel's van to get her, you know, to come along to the tour, and he told me that she locked him in the van and tried to kidnap him and told him to cancel the whole tour and to leave it all behind and stay in Glastonbury. I was so confused by this. I was like, Martin, why would you cancel? Why would she? 
Do you see, this is this bullshit again. She does this thing where she makes... I, I actually kind of believe that first bit. I don't know exactly what was being locked, who was locked in where, but there was some shit going down with Martin and they were having a bit of a row about this money in the tour. But then she plays all this innocent little girl. I couldn't possibly wonder what was happening. I couldn't possibly imagine when she knows full well and she's a grown-up and she's involved. And she's probably said a few things in one ear and a few things in the other ear and got this argument going. See that she locked him in the van and tried to kidnap him and told... I mean, do you think she said to that lady... Because I don't know this other lady now. There's another lady we've got to look into. But um, I think she probably said to her, oh, you know, Martin's fucking done this. Martin said to India about this. Have you, you'd better tell Martin. I can't speak to him. He won't speak to me. You better tell, you know, and then said to Martin, oh, Martin, are you sure? Because she might be asking India. Or, do you know what I mean? Like, it feels a bit like that. Told him to cancel the whole tour and to leave it all behind and stay in Glastonbury. I was so confused by this. I was like, Martin, why would you cancel? Why would she want you to cancel the whole tour and stay in Glastonbury? I find out later it was probably him actually lying because he wanted to cancel the talks he realized pretty quickly that it's not a whatever he thought it was going to be some that one look over there was actually looking at something out the room but most of this is constructed audio constructed visual you know making up a representation of what happened not actually telling us exactly what happened <sighs> cancel the talks he realized pretty quickly that it's not a whatever he thought it was going to be some party with free money it's not a party with free money. Well, that's what you probably sold in the idea, didn't you? You got him all excited about it. It's a big party. You can have a great tour, a great time. And uh, we'll get the money rolling in. And very quickly, it's not what he thought it'd be. It's not a party with free money. How fucking dare he enjoy himself? How fucking dare that Martin enjoy himself and expect people to pay him? How fucking dare Martin have a YouTube channel that's like a big party? I've seen his fucking videos. I've seen his videos. How come he's got a big party and loads of free money? I want that. That's not fair. Like, Jesus. Why are you so bitter that Martin was thinking it was going to be fun and successful it's not a whatever he thought it was going to be some party with free money it was actually going to be effort and you have to actually get out of bed on the morning and you have to actually do some work he does oh god you actually have to get out of bed you don't you just drove the van <laughs> you know what i mean jesus you have, to, you have to get out of bed and do some work so maybe martin was late getting up a couple of times you know what he's like he smokes weed and uh, stays up late partying and chatting shit so, you know, maybe he was late a few times. Jesus. Like, it's time to get him up on that cross. It's time to get the crucifixes out, guys. Martin doesn't work that hard. And that actually is a massive offence for somebody from the North who values money and hard work and time. You know, what's it about, Jade? What's it all about? Is he a predator? He doesn't like that. So, obviously, I didn't really speak to Mel much because I was still nervous around her after what he was telling me about her and saying... Hand touching, top of the head, self, self, it might just be an itch, but uh, self touching signals of stress, self soothing. She's mad with me and she's fuming. So this signal, and she looked, this is true, you've got problems with Mel. You've got problems with Mel. That's true. Self touching. You'll notice that she like tightens up when she talks about India and Mel because Martin is easy. She can confuse people, she can bully him, she can, she's used to throwing her weight around with Martin. With Mel, and with India, she doesn't do it with the women so much. She doesn't do it with the women. She's got a different technique with the women. And it's much more considered and much more careful. So she's much more reading them, uh, judging them, trying to work them out, finding it harder to work them out. Uh, so she shuts down, she's tighter. Uh, and this, yeah, she's had some sort of issue with Mel. Look, there's the self-touching, the self-soothing. The like, This isn't aggression now. This is almost... Um, uh, like in the subservience this is almost subservience and nod of the head still nervous around her after what he was telling me about her and saying that she's mad with me and she's fuming and um, so that really did keep me away from talking to mel or talking to really anyone about what's happening oh was... now you're being gaslit now you're being gaslit what's gaslighting where people say things and they're not true and it makes you feel bad about what other people what's gas i need to get the exact it's when they say that you're being bad, isn't it? Because I don't think you are being gaslit, actually. Hang on. Gas lighting. Uh, the manipulator tries to get someone else or a group of people to question their own reality, memory or perceptions. That sounds like that whole thing in the Tartaria. Question your own reality, doesn't it? The definition of gaslighting... <laughs> Look it up yourself. Look it up yourself. The de definition of gaslighting. Don't just trust my narrative, because I use Google, and Google's a load of shit, remember? But uh, I actually prefer to use Ecosia. Let's see what Ecosia says. Because 
because I do prefer to use a cozier. There you go. You'll be happy with that now. It's a, a happy medium, isn't it? It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not Google. It's not DuckDuckGo, but it's not Google. Gaslight. A type of lamp. No. Manipulate someone by psychological means into doubting their own sanity. Doubting their own reality. Doubting their own sanity. I don't know if I believe what I believe anymore. I don't know if I know what to believe anymore. Gaslighting. Okay. Sounds a lot like what they do on their videos, doesn't it? Sounds a lot like what Jade is doing on her videos generally. Convincing people that reality is not as they thought it was. Making them doubt their own ideas and sanities. Am I mad or did I think the world was this or you know what I'm saying? It sounds a lot like what she's doing as a natural behaviour all the time. And it sounds a lot like what she's doing here, making us doubt Martin. If she's speaking to Martin through this video, making Martin doubt Martin. I wonder how many times she said to Martin, You've been like this, you've been doing that, you've been this. You're weak, you can't do this. <laughs> I don't know. Is she the gaslighter? She's now asserting Martin is kind of gaslighting her, I think. It's only Martin that knew anything. So when we were in Bath, at this point he was over it. He didn't want to carry on with the tour. He was already realising what it was. Hard work, whatever. And uh, he had an argument with Mel. And okay, again, this is, uh, this is so unfair. Isn't it? This is so unfair. This isn't, here's my bank account. This is what the money they owe me. This is, I'm telling you secondhand what Martin's like. And it's not that he's a sexual aggressive bully who put his, he hit me, here's the photo. What it is, is it's, oh, he didn't want to do work. He, he didn't get out of bed. And why didn't he get out of bed? Well, I'm telling you it's because he's a, a lazy bugger. And you might be a lazy bugger, but this is your opinion on what you think he's thinking. This isn't like anything else than that. And it's very malicious. This is what I find so horrible because she knows she's just sort of like, you know, stitching people up, talking shit. And it usually works. Amongst certain circles, this sort of schoolgirl, he said, she said bullshit. This, oh, have you heard what fucking so-and-so has fucking said about you? Oh, fucking hell. You should call them up. You should go around and fucking punch their fucking head in. You know, all that shit works for some people. It don't work for me, love. Um, so that really did keep me away from talking to Mel or talking to really anyone about what's happening. It was only Martin that knew anything. So when we were in Bath, at this point he was over it. He didn't want to carry on with the tour. He was already realising what it was. Hard work, Constructed. Work, whatever. And uh, he had an argument with Mel. Looking into the truth, looking into things she's remembering. And I don't know what about, because again, he kept stopping me going over to Mel's van to go hang out with her. So again, saying she's angry at me and stuff. So I thought, oh my God, well, I best not go over there. But making up for her response. So it's true that he did that. He didn't want to go and talk to Mel. Possibly because she's whispering in Mel's ear. And then the made up response was, oh, I d you know, I'm innocent. I don't know. I've, I've got, uh, well, I wonder why he was doing that. I was just poor little girl in a van. Like, no, you weren't. You were fucking going nuts in your van, shouting this about Mel and fucking this and that and that about India. Like, it wasn't just like you were, oh, God, is the tour falling apart? You go ballistic when shit like that happens. ...with Mel, and I don't know what about, because, again, he kept stopping me going over to Mel's van to go hang out with her. So, again, saying she's angry at me and stuff. So I thought, oh, my God, well, I best not go over there. So I'm by myself in my van. He comes to the van and he's crying. And I said, what are you crying for? He said, oh, Mel... That was true. He was crying. Again... She looks into I'm memories. Her, again, saying she's angry at me and stuff. So I thought, oh my God, well, I best That's not go over there. So I'm by myself in my van. True. He comes to the van and he's crying. No. Yeah. Uh, comes to the van's a bit of a funny one, but crying he, he definitely was doing. So what are you crying for? He said, oh, Mel's leaving. I was like, why? He's like, we've had an argument. I said, what about? And he will not tell me. And that night he had to sleep in my van. And that night he had to sleep in my van. I don't know what she's making up here constructing it all again. I think she's making up the tone and context of it. I think he's making, she's making up the tone and context of it. And it is, it's one of these things as well where like you are needing to be valuable to Martin. You need to separate him and like, if you're going to con Martin, yeah, you need to separate him and Mel. You need to get between them, cause some sort of antagonism. And then you need to be the person that he turns to. So, Martin ending up in your van is actually a bit of a win for you, isn't it, in terms of the control of Martin? But I thought Martin, we saw in the last episode, would never condescend to sleep in your van. I thought one of the things you didn't like about Martin was that he had to have these hotel rooms. So it seems strange that now at this stage, he will sleep in your van. Because <laughs> you told us he wouldn't sleep in the van, but now he will sleep in the van. 
on the floor on an airbed. There was only three nights where he didn't actually have a hotel room. The rest of the nights he was actually staying in hotels. He was staying in the abyss. And so again, we're angry about these hotels. We had a bit of self-touching. She edited heavily off the last bit airbed and into this. So I can't really, you know, I need to see the surrounding body language as well as just the, the little touch. But uh She's going back into being angry. I think we edited out this bit. I think she might have said some more stuff, looked at it and thought, well, that doesn't make Martin sound like he wouldn't sleep in the van. That makes him sound like he would sleep in the van. Because she goes on to say it was only three nights that he slept in the van. So I think she details those three nights, looks at it in the edit and thinks that doesn't validate what I'm saying. It makes me look like I'm lying. So then she cuts it out. I don't know what happened on those three nights. She didn't tell us, but three nights go past with him sleeping in the fucking van. So let's not ever, ever again pretend that Martin wouldn't sleep in the van. And he was staying in Travel Lodge. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that point later. So... We oh, we have a really big edit there. And she looks tired. Her makeup is different. Her hair is different. So either this is later on in the evening. I don't know what time she recorded that video. Maybe this is later on in the same day. Or maybe this is the next day and she's just wearing the same clothes. Uh, I do that quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, this is not in the same sitting. So I imagine she's looked through it, edited it, and decided there's things she hasn't said. She didn't like the way the last video ended. She's got to recut the ending because she didn't look good. We end up in York for the York tour and Martin had been increasingly snappy, distant. Well, maybe it's just too much to fit in one sitting. I don't know, but it's a 20 minute video. It's a 40 minute video, so it's not that long. Although her original, her original, we never see the original file. We don't see what she actually said originally she, on her construction of this. We just see her edited version, remember? Um, never giving me a straight answer when I'm asking him serious questions about the tour. He couldn't keep lying to me anymore at this point because he knew, I think, that I knew there was something going on. That he Right, this, you know, all these flags about her body language aside, there's something else I want to say here. At this point, Martin has probably cottoned on that you're a right fucker. You know, he's probably cottoned on that you won't stop going on about this money. You're causing trouble between him and his friends. That the tour is not as enjoyable as he thought it was. It's not fun and games because you're not fun and games. You're all like, oh, stay in the fucking van. I don't want to spend money on that. Don't eat that, Martin. I don't want to spend money on that. Like, you're causing all these problems for Martin. And he doesn't really like you anymore. You've done this talking to the men on the tour. You've done this whatever you've been doing. He's decided he's not a big fan of you anymore. So, of course, he's not going to be sharing everything with you anymore. He's not going to be like opening up to you anymore. Maybe he's not lying to you. But now, you like, for Martin, who thinks this person is going to try and screw him, maybe. Maybe. I don't know what goes on in his head. I'm just conjecture here. Or if he thinks this person is antagonizing him, if he doesn't enjoy being around them. You know for yourself that when they're talking to you and you've already decided, I used to work with this girl. Not in my salon, somewhere else I worked. I'm not going to name names because I don't want anyone to feel bad. But God damn it, I just couldn't get on with her. Just couldn't get on with her. And, uh, you know, I felt it was predominantly her behaviour. <laughs> and I could validate that with some, you know, accounts of evidences. But it's, it's not important about who's what. You know, we've all grown up now. But the thing I was going to say was I could never get on with her. So when she'd ask me questions or, you know, like, where have you been for lunch? I'm not just going to be like, oh, right, yeah, I just went out to so-and-so. It was really nice, sat by the river. I just, I just grabbed a sandwich. And she'd be like, did you? Because I saw you eating a, a burger at so-and-so. And I was like, well, I said sandwich, but just because I don't care about talking to you, I just don't want to talk to you. So I just said whatever. I'm like, just leave me alone. And she'd be like, he lied to me about what his lunch was. I'm like, God damn it. I just said I just went for a sandwich. Okay, it was a, a hot sandwich with a... It doesn't matter. I don't want to talk to you. I just, you know, where did you go drinking last night? I oh, just into town. Oh, did you? Because I saw you at so-and-so and that's not in town. Well, it doesn't matter. I just said I went, in, you know, not just out. Just, just leave me alone. Do you know what I mean? Maybe he's at that point with this lady because he knows there's something up. The tour is going wrong. The money's not coming through. She's getting angry, angry, angry and forcing him into situations that he doesn't feel comfortable in anymore. He wasn't actually thinking of paying me. He thought it'd be easier than what it was the whole tour and it obviously was hard work and he couldn't do that. She reiterates that point. It's just hearsay, malicious hearsay. I don't know if that's Martin's reasons for doing things. Too much hard work. He seemed to enjoy going on those walks with those people. So at this point, he just wanted to fall out with me, I think. So, he was trying so now, again, he just wanted to fall out with me. So it makes me think he's already fallen out with you. He's decided he doesn't like you. Now you're going to not... It's, it's not your fault because of what you've done to him. What it is now is he's decided he's going to fall out with you for some sort of political reason. <laughs> Get real. Martin's not operating on those levels. Martin just doesn't like you anymore. Trying to cause a, a rift between us, trying to get snappy, cause arguments. He was rude to my family. My family... Oh, your family. This makes me also think that 
you've gone to York because you wanted to go to York and it's nothing to do with the Flat Earth tour, the, the Tartaria tour. Maybe, you know, maybe she's decided just to go there and uh, and visit her family. And like, Martin's thinking, why are we visiting your chuffing family? We're supposed to be doing this thing. You've You've hijacked the tour and twisted it to now visit the places you want to it's going to end in scotland where you want to end up and oh so instead of i thought we were going on a, a tour but instead what you're doing is you wanted to go driving around these places you wanted us to pay money to put in your van and you wanted us to pay you driving money and all this and end up where you've organized yourself a big holiday and we're doing the tour to pay for it <laughs> the tour is like a byproduct of your previous plan and when he realizes this he's not happy with her he's not happy with her <laughs> What are you, the town snitch? Who's that, Chadwick? Uh, uh, we're just having a chat about stuff, so like, there's no police involved. <laughs> there's no police involved, and no one's done anything criminal. That's really important to note, Chadwick, as well, is that if she's got a criminal allegation against Martin, which is serious, you know, predatory, aggressive, serious, you know, these harassment, these sort of things, she should be with the police. If serious things. If it's serious things, there should be criminal. If you're robbing the money off the business, it could be criminal. Certainly, I can take you to small claims court if you said you'd pay me. I've got the evidence, got my email. There's none of that. There's none of that involved. It's just all this he said, he said, he said, she said, schoolyard bullying, trying to gather a crowd so that the, the, you can slander this person's name and rile up their emotions and you know, make slight allegations and this and that and appear to be the innocent little girl and all the white knights will save me when actually you're, a, you know, operational, you know, an operator. So uh, there's no police involved at any juncture here, though. Not, not at any juncture, which is a massive surprise if someone was being aggressive, predatory and stealing money. Invited him in and everything and they were so nice to him and he did nothing but be snappy and rude. When we are in York on the day of the tour, I went into his hotel room that morning and he was just sat there and I was like, are you okay? And he was like, I'm not. No, I've been ill all night. And I was like, that's terrible. Oh my God, are you all right? You know, he said he had a fever. He didn't get any sleep and he feels really, really ill. So then I... Like this is... I think she's giving a reasonable account of some of the stuff. But she's doing this with her hand like, and looking into this construction again. So it's her side of the way this comes across. It's her way of telling it. Um, her selected moments, I guess. But it doesn't feel that it rings exactly true. I panicked. I went and got him some apple juice. And I rang my mum to see if she could bring any tablets. Oh, you rang your mum. <laughs> got him apple juice. So I, I don't care about Martin at this point, remember. I'm angry with Martin. I think Martin's a right fucking bell end. He's on this this is her train of thought. Put yourself in her shoes. Yeah? Martin's a fucking bell end. Yeah? He's he's I don't like him anymore. We're on this tour and he's being a, a dickhead and I'm not getting my money and I'm angry with Martin. And now he's saying he's sick. What would you do? What would you do? See what I'd do? I'd bang on that door and say, Martin, you get the fuck up out of that bed now because if you don't go on that fucking tour, we're not get we're having to refund the tickets. I'm not refunding these tickets because of you, Martin. You've been a bell end over this. You've been a bell end over that. I'm fed up with this shit. Get out of bed and go. I would do that if I was at work. And I know it sounds like, what, you would say that at work? No, if we're equal partners in a business, you're pulling your fucking weight. And you better show me that damn, you know, that damn sick. I've been sick. I've been in work. And this is going to sound terrible because I was a hairdresser. <laughs> but I've been in work and I've been in the toilet and I've thrown up and then I've washed my hands and combed my hair and readied myself and got ready for the day's clients because like, I've got to get through today because the clients are booked in. I've also given it to the other end. I've also said, look, fuck it, you do them. I'm tired. Like, so let's not say I'm some sort of saint. But like, I know what it takes hard work. I get that. But what do you think you would be like when you heard Martin wasn't going to get out of bed for this York tour because he's sick? Are you going to run and get him some apple juice? Because you're a lovely angel. Are you going to run and get him some apple juice because you're a lovely angel? Come off it. You've already told us that you're angry with him and you're fed up with him. You're running to get him apple juice because you are Florence Nightingale, angel of the north. So then I panicked. I went and got him some apple juice and I rang my mum to see if she could bring any tablets with her for him. So you can ring your mum and your mum can just bring down some tablets. So what happened to being on your own in a van? and what Going to York seemed to really suit you. Um, because it was the day of the tour in York. And she, she agreed she was going to bring some painkillers for him and, and some other things to help. Obviously, you can and spot that. And giving myself time to think and make something up. And while I look into my ideas about what I'm making up. <laughs> it's like a child, isn't it? It's like a child. And she 
she, she agreed she was going to bring some painkillers for him and, and some other things to help him. He told me that he has pneumonia and he's going to die. If he goes to hospital, he's going to die, which triggered me because that's exactly how they managed to kill my dad. They what? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, this is going to take a real turn now. This is going to take a real turn. Big face. I have to confess, you know, my nan died because of COVID. I, what happened was, the COVID, you know the COVID came around. You went through that. We all went through that, yeah? Uh, some people think it was not real, but like, whether you think it was real or not, you know that it happened, like, these things happened. We all had to stay home. That was real. You, were, you weren't supposed to go out. That was real, yeah? Being at home. So when that happened, I like, look, we used to have nan on, an, on the Alexa, just like that little Alexa in the kitchen, little picture. And sometimes she'd, uh, you know, be struggling around with her little walking thing. And um, a couple of times of the months leading up to the COVID, she'd fallen. I'm like, where are you, Nan? And she's like, where are you? Oh, God, we're going to have to go around. Nan's fallen. She's all right. She just couldn't get up off the floor. You know, just chuffing out. And, you know, little things like checking on her. Nan, have you had your dinner yet? It's getting on for six o'clock, Nan. If you, you better do your dinner because you don't want to eat too late. You know, treating her like a child, but checking out, checking she's all right. Always on the Alexa, always there with Nan. And then, because uh, I work from home as well, doing this chuff, so always talking to Nan. And then COVID started to rear its head. And I actually said several weeks before COVID, I said, look, this looks like if there was ever a possibility that this sort of shit kicked off, we'd have to get Nan living with us. Like Nan's going to have to come and live here. And then as it started to go on the news, and I was already saying it because of her walking and all that, but as it started to go on the news, I said, look, Nan's living with us. Let's, let's pull the trigger now. We'll work out the details later. Um, you know, we had to prepare, the room I'm in now was Nan's bedroom, so we had to get a, a, a hospital-style bed that was easy to get in and out of, that she could lift herself up and down. We had to get one of those big chairs with the movement, you know, all the moving things, the movement. We had to get the downstairs loo decked out with the handles and, like, that was a, a, wash bay, a washcloth room, really. You know what I mean? Like, we had to get all this set up for Nan. And uh, I had to give up, because I used to, I wanted to, I used to make YouTube, I wasn't streaming then, but I was making YouTube videos, doing content, playing Hearthstone and other stuff, uh, smart, whatever. I had, I had YouTube, all my computer set up. That all had to go, because Nan, get Nan, I put my computer out the back. So that was all right. You know, that had to go. Uh, Nan came, COVID happened, yeah? For all the time during the COVID, for about a year and a half, I became my Nan's carer. Uh, it wasn't easy. We had to lift her up in and out the chairs and that stuff. I didn't wash her bits. My mom was doing the, the wash. It became more, we got the actual helping hands. They came to the house twice a day, once in the morning to help get her up, once in the evening to help put her to bed. And uh, I'd do all the rest with mom. Mom and me would make like big batch cooking because <laughs> mom goes and stays with her boyfriend and uh, like she's like living her own life and I'm here looking after Nan more often. But like we're both doing it, but uh, like I'm here more permanently and uh, you know, mom was uh, in a sort of more of a bubble. Actually, no, for a while she wasn't able to see her boyfriend, was she? So she was here permanently as well. And then when it became other bubbles she was able to get more time off it but my mom did such a lot you know my mom did such a lot and i did my bit not as much as my mom i, I would say um, but yes yeah, so I, I was caring for my nan though officially i was signed on as a carer i was cooking her dinners i was getting everything for her helping her to the bathroom and back i wasn't wiping her bum but everything else i'm on it yeah um and then she did catch pneumonia she did catch pneumonia. She caught pneumonia about a year before before the COVID. She caught pneumonia. She went to the hospital, right? And the hospital were fucking brilliant. They were absolutely brilliant. She has all these troubles. Like when she gets pneumonia, when any old people get an infection like this, it can send them a bit confusion. You know, she ended up with her hair out here looking like a wild woman of Borneo. I had to go into the hospital and cut her hair for her. Um, you know, like... Uh, she, but the people at the hospital were fucking brilliant. RNHS is an absolute diamond rock it's something that our societies like we we're so we underestimate how grateful we should be for that uh and it's something that's crumbling in the hands of the tories that's another story but uh they want to sell it off and make money but that's another story bottom line they were fantastic when she had pneumonia they did their very best and they told us it might not work out you know they were careful to tell us it might not work out but they gave her all the antibiotics they helped her through it. And then after she recovered from the pneumonia, she didn't come straight out of hospital. She needed to do these like help to get back on your feet things. They helped her with all that. They are absolutely fucking amazing, right? The fact that they're absolutely amazing at the hospital. The actual doctor that, you know, saying 
it might not work out. I remember these conversations and I remember my mom sort of saying to him, like, you know, can you, I believe she can make this, she'll fight this. So I don't want you to think that she's just some old woman who can't get through this. You know, do what you have to do. Let's get her through it. And like, he agreed, you know, I could see that he took on the challenge, so to speak, of uh, providing the absolute pinnacle of, of healthcare for free for an elderly woman who's, you know, in her 80s, 90s, 80s at this point, I suppose it was, you know, uh, that some people might say, well, you know, no, they're absolutely brilliant. She pulled through, she fought it. It wasn't like a, it wasn't as, we were worried, but it turned out, you know, we didn't have to be that worried because she was quite, you know, she, the antibiotics did their work. She recovered, she came out of hospital. Um, then, so then she was at home, we were monitoring on the Alexa, like I said, and then she's, COVID's happened, she's come to us. So I knew when she went into hospital, she got the COVID, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to say my words. I was caring for her for this year and a half. The COVID was happening. We're just getting around to the vaccines. So she hasn't had a vaccine, but we're about a week away from her being able to go and get a vaccine. She signed up for it. She's ready to go for a vaccine, yeah? And then she catches pneumonia. Now, they said it was uh, community... Cool. I, I guess you can... I don't know how this shit works, really. But I guess you catch pneumonia because bacteria, your environment... You know, she's washing in the downstairs toilet and pooping in her nappy, frankly. So I, I don't want to discredit her name by... You know, saying how... You know, she was an invalid when she was old. Of course, we all will be, but... Uh, you know, I think there were reasons why she might have caught that. Okay, I can accept that she's caught pneumonia before in her own home. I can accept that she's caught it in ours. I was trying my very utmost best to keep everything clean and, you know, do my best to keep uh, keep her safe. She didn't catch the COVID in our house, I'll tell you that. She didn't catch the COVID in our house. But she didn't get a vaccine. So when she went to the hospital, she was straight into a ward where other people had COVID. Because you can't just put people on a, a ward until you've given them the tests to check that they're COVID-free. So she's straight into what they call the dirty ward. In the, you know, in the terminology in-house they might have said that dirty and clean they don't probably don't say dirty they probably just say clean and red or something but she was in this pre-ward being assessed got pneumonia they've told us it's pneumonia we're keeping an eye we can't go to the hospital at this point bear in mind which is a big issue because her mental health keeping her up keeping her alert keeping her knowing that we're there and we're with her um as she gets confused with the infection so we couldn't go to the hospital we're ringing her every day ringing the hospital every day um, and they're keeping us informed she goes into the normal bit. She hasn't got COVID. They've done the test. She hasn't got COVID. She goes into the normal bit of hospital. Then about a week later, she's moved again because she does have the COVID. They don't say she has the COVID. They don't say exactly where she's, they've moved her. And she doesn't know what's going on. But I'm telling you that she's moved again because she has the COVID. Because about a week after that, they're like, oh, her x-rays are looking bad now. She's got this glassy stuff in her lungs. The x-rays, are, they didn't say we've tested her for COVID and she's come out positive. She's got the COVID. But they said all of the... Like they don't, uh, a doctor will make a diagnosis based on your symptoms. So they were describing these symptoms and basically telling her she's got the COVID and then she died. And so I feel that she caught COVID in hospital because all the other fuckers that were going around spreading COVID in society who didn't care, who didn't believe in it, in my opinion, and you don't have to share this opinion. Obviously, you know, I'm not here to argue opinions. Opinions are like arseholes. Everyone is one. But this is how I feel. And you don't have to respect it either. I don't care. But this is how I feel. That uh, She caught it in hospital and the tragedy was if the rest of us in society had been more careful, the hospitals wouldn't have been so riddled with it. And then she might not have caught it. And she was a week away from a vaccine. So I think it was a real tragedy. You know, I was pretty upset. I'd spent a year and a half caring for her, for Christ's sake. After that, my story continues. This is how I'm streaming now. I'm in the room and... You know, lovely wallpaper that we put up for is now my backdrop. And, uh, you know, I spoke at a funeral and these things happen and you move on. You move forward. It's a tragedy. I feel the same feeling that probably some 200,000 families in the UK feel. You know, how many people know someone that has died of COVID? Or some people don't believe it's COVID, whatever. But, you know, some somebody that's died. You still feel it doesn't matter whether they died of COVID or cancer. You still fucking care, don't you? You still feel upset. It doesn't matter whether the government pretended it was a fake. That if they died, you're going to feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad. She's going to feel bad. She's going to feel bad. But I fucking worry about someone who, and I'm not. I don't know that she's done this. 
I don't know if she's done this. But if you didn't believe in the COVID, you didn't have a vaccine and you thought it was all fake bullshit and you went around and ignored the rules or bent the rules or just, you know, slightly bent the rules. You might not have killed your own dad directly by passing on COVID directly to your own dad, but you might have been one of the 40% of people who went around, didn't know they had COVID, 40% of people who were symptoma asymptomatic, and you might have killed my nan. You might have been in hospital that day or passed it on to someone that killed my nan. So you're sort of directly responsible for my nan's death. And also, you'll start, if that's what's killed your dad, you're, you're responsible for that too. That must be so fucking awful to think. Imagine questioning the narrative, right? Vaccinated can catch... Uh, we're not going to argue about COVID now because it's a different topic, right? But I will just say this. Vaccinated can absolutely catch and spread. Yes. <laughs> yes. Omicron's different now, but we're talking about the Delta that was lethal. And yes, absolutely, we still could. But only a very small, much smaller fraction could. And when they spread it in, in smaller viral loads, the people that were also vaccinated didn't get as sick. So that's why it was so important. That's why it's so important. True, the vaccinated could have done it too. But at this point, we didn't have vaccines. This was before the vaccine. She had only just got the offer to get her vaccine. So we, we, none of us had a vaccine at this point. So she went into hospital, you know, before that was an option. Um, anyway, they're my feelings. You know, I, I worry about that. It makes me, it's a problem in my life because we can all have opinions. I don't mind. You know, you can think the moon is made of cheese if you want. But if you tell me in the pub, oh yeah, I didn't give a fuck about that. I was just around my mate's house having a beer the other day, like, you know, during COVID. I think, fuck, my nan just died. And you've done that. I don't really, you know, I don't really, it, it makes me feel bad inside to be a f friendly, ha ha, isn't that great with you? Because, you know, my nan died and you seem disrespectful or, you know, even if, and get this, even if it's only a 10% chance, you 90% think COVID is fake, 10% it might be. I'm not 100% on anything. Maybe it's better to not kill my fucking nan. <laughs> Maybe it's better to just take it off for a year. And if it was fake, it was fake. So what? We all go on with our lives. But if not, if there was that 10% you killed my nan, maybe it's not to risk it. I don't know. You know, everyone else's nan. Hundreds of thousands of people feel like me. So I'm not alone. Hundreds of thousands of people have to grieve because of this COVID thing. I'm not alone. And it seems that I'm not alone because it seems that me and Jade have something in common. The only difference is our approach to what happened. Now, I'm going to say this and it's quite big. Uh, I'm going to go web browser again. I'm just going to change the battery on the camera. Because you've got to remember... that Jade is the sort of person... Like Jade is a kind of person, she doesn't deal with things in the same way as you or I. I? She doesn't deal with things in the same way as I. That doesn't sound right. She doesn't deal with things in the same way as you and me. She doesn't deal with things in the same way as me. You and me, yeah. She doesn't deal with things in the same way as you and me, does she? You know, she's a different kind of person. You can see through all this weird shit going on with this, with this whole tour thing. You know, I'm sure you've been in a job before where you've been slighted or hard done by like i've had the um i've had uh what you call it um i've had jobs where i've not been paid but i've not made youtube videos about them um, i've talked about them sometimes on stream so actually i'm a bit guilty of that but uh yeah i mean i don't think she reacts in the same way as you or i so uh you or me so like you just got to remember she's been through this tragedy of her dad dying and because she like even if there's 10% of her imagine this imagine it's not code imagine it's something else did you put the handbrake on in the car yes absolutely well it's just rolled down the drive and killed your dad well I definitely put the handbrake on well it's just rolled down the drive and killed your dad are you 100% sure you put the handbrake on I mean there's like 1% I have left the handbrake off once or twice what would go through your head even if it was handbrake failure they took it to the garage. They proved it later. For three days, you're sat there while the garage is with your car thinking, fuck, I hope I put the handbrake on. God, I'm sure I put the handbrake on. I'm sure I did. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you imagine that happening? Yeah, imagine that, that thought process, those feelings. So I'm not arguing about COVID now. We can argue about that at the time if you want. The arguments have happened. We've now moved through. The Omicron is here. It's because of, in my opinion, vaccines and the spread of Omicron, we are now at a position where vaccines are not so important. Certainly not COVID vaccines. And I, for one, would not be recommending you vaccinate children now. That's my personal feelings on that. It's different, isn't it? 
You thought I was going to be all, get the jabs in everyone. Well, no, I don't think we need that anymore. Omicron can take over. We can use that herd immunity that we were hope that the, the heads of state were hoping for in the early days because they didn't want to have to spend any money. So uh, <laughs> we can argue about that another day, right? We can argue about that another day. Um, and I'm sorry that your nan died uh, after the flu jab. I don't know, again, I don't know the, from a comment on the YouTube, I can't validate anything. And I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but what I'm saying is I don't know anything about that. So I'm going to say I'm sorry for your nan. I'm sorry for your feelings. I've, exactly what I'm saying here. Sorry for that. We've been through the same sort of shit. Losing your nan is horrible. But I'm not going to argue about whether what happened because I don't know. So I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to respect what you say and I'm just going to accept it and say that's not very nice. Um, I don't know if that means that everyone shouldn't get a flu jab. I don't know if that means that. But certainly it would put you off it because you've got this direct experience of something quite quite negative and it is a tragedy and I'm sorry. Um, I don't know about the case. I mean, you're saying that she died later but it might be, you know, all these things they say, oh, you could have got hit by a bus. Well, I don't know and I'm not going to argue with anyone and go too deep on comments about things that I don't know about. That's fair, isn't it? And this video is about Jade, so we've accidentally got talking about COVID and I'm not really going to go heavy into it. You're not going to convince me. I'm not going to convince you. I'm not going to try to. And honestly, it doesn't really matter anymore, apart from the fact that I feel bad when I think, God, did people kill my nan? So what I'm saying is, does 10% of her believe that she might have done something wrong? Might have. Does she feel some sort of guilt? How would you, how would you internalize that? And how would that play out in your psyche at losing your father? Especially if you're one of these sort of people that's spreading all these ideas that's like into all this conspiracy theory. You know, especially if you're living in your van and things are stressful. I think it must be so hard for her. I wonder how that would play out. I'm not expert enough in psychological trauma to detail what I think. And I worry now that some of her body language and my perception of it is colored by the fact that she might be like, and I'm going to say this like seriously, she might be a bit seriously mentally um, affected by some of these traumas. And that might play out in body language in other ways. Uh, she might have anxiety issues or post-traumatic stress issues. Um, and certainly detailing some of these events might bring that up. So I've got to be careful here as well. Um, yes, Capital K, she is still talking about the fucking van. Uh, and now we've moved on to um, her dad died of COVID, but she doesn't believe in COVID and she wouldn't have any vaccines. And uh, her dad died of COVID, but she doesn't think her dad died of COVID. She thinks her dad went into hospital with pneumonia and they killed him in the hospital. And that's something that really important I wanted to bring up as well. Now, I'm going to nail this and then we're going to carry on with her because it's really important this is. Big face. It's very, very offensive to say things like that because there are people that devote their lives to save others. There are people that work very long hours and are not paid that well compared to the duty and honour, the, the duty they perform and the honour they uphold. There are some people in our country that are working as nurses, they're working as hospital porters, uh, they're also working as doctors, I'm going to include doctors, but we know the doctors get a bit better pay. We know they get a bit better pay. But um, in our country, we've got nurses, hospital porters, people working in and around the hospital. I, I thanked the receptionist at the hospital last time I was in there because I said, look, you've been through such a lot. You're at the front of house. All this COVID's happened and you've got the people coming in. You've got the screens up. It's for you. It's changed such a lot and you're meeting everyone. So I just really want to thank you for your, uh, you know, the duty and honor that you perform. I think it's just so wonderful. Um, so it's really important to note that if you suggest these people that do this job and Angie's saying thank you because she works in that field but in America you get highly paid <laughs> whereas some of them in England uh, working for the government essentially you know working for the government on the NHS National Health Service not charging money for the, the care giving it out for free and getting what the government tell them they can have and not getting a pay rise our nurses have not had a, a, a pay rise that represents, you know, you talk about this inflation and all this, their money's been going down over the years, not up. It's just fucking horrific. And they put in all this time and care. And like I said before, they saved my nan's life. I've been in, my mate just broke her ankle yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before now? She broke her ankle and we went to the hospital and they fucking put it in a plaster cast. If you break your ankle, Jade, and if you break your ankle, anyone else, where are you going? Where are you going? Do you trust them to fix your ankle? If you're going to have a baby, who's going to deliver it? Like, come on. 
The NHS are absolute diamonds and the people that choose to vocate vocationally choose to devote their lives to that uh, absolute saints and angels so to suggest that they might have killed your nan or dad or anyone else maliciously deliberately that's murder and you're suggesting it of someone who has devoted their life to the opposite to caring for people without question it's just so fucking offensive it's so offensive and it makes me think that that's come out because she can't deal with her being responsible. You know, people who won't take responsibility. Even if you don't believe in COVID, yeah? Even if you don't believe in it, yeah? If it killed your dad, or they're saying they think that you're responsible. Other people think you're responsible. You might not believe it, but your mom might think you're responsible. You didn't have a vaccine and you came round and you saw him the Tuesday before and you went to that party in your van and, you know what I mean? They might think you're responsible, so you might feel really defensive then. I don't know, man. This is such a fucking huge thing. I think I've said enough about it now. I'm really worried about it and I don't want to make this a stream about COVID. But I'll tell you something else that's major and we'll watch her talk and then I'll say something else that's absolutely mind-blowing. Right? Well, he's going to die, which triggered has pneumonia and he's going to die if he goes Bearing in mind, she's bringing this up because Martin said he got pneumonia. He told me that he has pneumonia and he's going to die. If he goes to hospital, he's going to die, which triggered me because that's exactly how they managed to kill my dad. They he, they got him in when he had pneumonia, told him he had the C word, he told him he had that. and then Edited. So I don't know. I don't know. It was edited. But what I'm a bit surprised about is two things, and I'm going to say the bigger one second. So the first one is, it was about Martin having pneumonia. Remember, Martin was so sick he thought he might have pneumonia. If you've just lost your dad, your dad started out having pneumonia, he went to the hospital, he ended up dead. Are you not worried that Martin, who thinks he's got the same symptoms, who is saying he's that sick, no, you're not thinking, shit, this could be really serious. God, it killed my dad, like, it killed my dad, so Martin might be really sick. You know, we should worry about Martin, he's right here alive, my dad's dead now, my nan's dead now. I'd worry about Martin and feel, no, it's about me now and I, and my dad died of pneumonia, so it's not fair to trigger me. It's not fair to trigger me to make me feel something. It's not fair to make me feel something. You should have shut up with your pneumonia and fucking died of it. That would have been better than triggering me. Okay, you might not have died of it. Maybe you're making it up. Maybe it's you're going over the top. Maybe triggering me is offensive if you're just making up your sickness. But come on, man. Come on, man. Like, you're, you're saying you're triggered, and that's the offence. Um, again, Lindsay, I'm not going to discuss any further COVID discussion. Uh, again, if you want to get into it, we can maybe have an episode on it. But I think you'll find there's fucking loads of people's opinions about COVID all over the internet. You've got, obviously got yours. You've developed yours over the last couple of years. Like, I'm not going to agree with some of them, maybe. <laughs> I don't like it. Like, I've explained why it makes me feel uncomfortable when people say certain things because I think, you know, it relates to my life in a tragic way. But I'm not going to... We're not going to... If I argue uh, for an hour about it, you're not going to change your mind and I'm not going to necessarily, you know, really feel like I want to change mine. I've seen a lot of stuff, a lot of ideas, remember. We've both seen a lot of ideas over this time. So I just don't think it's worth... I think maybe if we want to get on as human beings, we have to just move on from it. Uh, rights, wrongs, he's, he thinks, they think, you think, whatever. She thinks, they think. You know, uh, now we've got the Omicron. Like, sometimes it's worth living in the now. Sometimes it's worth actually taking what we've got for real and just dealing with that. Because I can't even get to the truth on some things you might think this i might think that i am not going to be able to go around with my science box and magically put all the detail oh that's the truth box there we go found it found it i base things on my perception of the evidence you base things on yours uh you know maybe we do change ideas but i don't think that like, if we had a debate a covid debate we'd have two lines of chairs i'm on one side you're on the other we've got our teams we argue for two hours and then at the end one of us gets up and goes oh you've done really well i'm going to sit on your side there we go you've won no no one ever does that. No one ever concedes the debate and says, you know what, actually, we've all changed our mind. It's just we end up shouting our different ideas for two hours and getting nowhere. So, you know, maybe we need to just move on from that if we can, because it can only cause more division. And 
like I was saying before, I think we need to fight the power. Like Boris Johnson shouldn't be lording it over us drinking champagne during this process. And now he's still f up there making the money. I just think it's wrong. But instead we're arguing over whether things existed or not, or face masks were a good idea. Well, it's gone now. Like, that argument's finished. I'll wear my face mask if I want, and you won't if you don't want. And, you know, that's just how it's going to be. I used to wear fucking <laughs> nail varnish, and people told me I couldn't because I was a boy. So I don't care what people say I can wear. Um, I was wearing a face mask in the airport before COVID because I just don't like people, and I think they're covered in germs. <laughs> anyway, look, anyway, this woman... And they put in my she said that Martin's that sick, he might have pneumonia and die. She's been through that herself. And she's relating it to her and her feelings. She doesn't care about Martin and his feelings. We're way beyond that now. Martin's a shit. She don't care a shit about him. Her dad died and she was triggered. And this is something that absolutely blows my mind what's going to happen next. In a coma on a ventilator and he died. And Martin telling me that he has pneumonia and he can't go to hospital and everything. It just... I was in panic mode. I told him I would take over the tour in York. And I will try and figure out what the heck we can do about everything else. Don't worry about it. Leave it to me. I'll sort it out. And he can just go home and rest for as long as he needs. And he said he could rejoin again in Newcastle. Now we're on again about what Martin said. She edited it, right? She edited it, so I can't be sure of this. But what really troubles me is that if you're starting to talk about your dad that died and it's recent, she edited it, so maybe she did have a little cry. But I'm not, am I seeing you, you maybe people that wear more makeup than me, you know, if you wear makeup, you tell me. Do you think she looks like she's been crying? I don't think I'd be able to say my dad died. Like when I talked about my nan, you watch back my old streams. You know, find it. It's well worth watching our old streams on the YouTube channel. Some of them are actually good fun. Watch back. Sometimes I cry on stream. I can't help it because we talk about something and it just hits me. Quite often it happens on Mental Health Monday. Um, and I just have to cry because I'm still processing these emotions. Now, I wouldn't be able to say my dad died without getting choked up if it was that recent so i find it so strange that she's now straight into laying into martin again and the bitterness and the anger and like we've just alighted on the biggest trauma in her life over the last i don't know how long if it were me it would be like the biggest trauma in my life of the last 10 20 years and that yeah it's like yeah and that made me feel bad because my dad died and he was on a ventilator so fucking martin martin's a fucking shit and this and that and i mean god damn it like where's your compassion where's your heart are you that wound up that you're so angry that you you just alight over the death of your dad and use it as a tool to poke at Martin? It's fucked up and weird. I don't like it, devoid of emotion. I don't like it. Maybe she edited it. Maybe she edited it. But it really, that's another one that I find a huge red flag. And uh, people think this, this chuffer's telling the truth and is there, you know, doing the best for women on the internet or something. But I don't, I don't see that. He just needed a few days to rest and sleep and uh, I believed him but we get into your the truth here is that she believed him the thing she's making up with the constructive body language and all that is the stuff that he was saying and that again it's constant with that so I can't keep saying it when she looks over to one direct this isn't the way it works but neurolinguistic pro she's looking towards the left our left constructed visual constructed auditory and it matches up with what might sound like a lie and she's also doing shrugging or um, raising her eyebrows or you know other forms of body language that we can pick up on we add it all up if our body language things together so that's a bit of a lie it's, it's disingenuous I, I don't like that it doesn't sound correct to me I'm a bit worried about it it doesn't it sounds like you're making stuff up it might not be a like a black or white lie but it doesn't sound right the other side I'm much happier with looking up to the right remember things, remembering things, saying things without having to pause and sort of make up what someone said and then he said, like, just remembering it and just saying, because she said this and I was just there a minute ago and I remember that she said that because I was here, you know, just talking a lot more naturally is not what... So that's the kind of thing we're looking for and all the way through, I'm going to now stop picking her up on which side and whether that feels a bit true, but you notice that it's not the case of one she like say one thing that's a bit true with a bit of a lie added on and a bit embellished i think she really likes to spin the truth and embellish things and make things seem worse than they are and dramatize things i think that's her bag and he decides he's still going to do the tour for york and then go home afterwards i i thought it was a bad idea if he was really as ill as he was saying he is having a four mile walk around york isn't going to help him but um, he was adamant he was going to do it 
this is weird as well because isn't that the opposite of what she was saying earlier because she was saying earlier that martin was the kind of person who was too lazy to get out of bed and do the tour she was angry at martin remember she was angry at martin because he wasn't going to put in the work on the tour but now martin is saying look i'm sick and I'm actually so sick that I think I've got pneumonia. And between us, we think going to the hospital will kill me. They're going to kill me in the hospital. Like, that's some serious shit, if that's what you believe. I don't believe that. That's what they believe, right? So, and at that point, he's saying, you know what, though? I'm still going to do the tour. Like, isn't that brave? And isn't that hardworking? Isn't that what you were criticizing him for not being earlier? Now you're criticizing him for doing it. Oh, walking around New York wouldn't be no good. So he can't win. Can he, Martin? He can't win. You're holding him to a strange double standard. Why is that? Because you just want to paint him out to be a shit. Everything he does, you're going to twist and spin so it sounds bad. That's what your agenda is. You proved it by just doing it. So that's just bullshit, isn't it? It's just rubbish. You can't do that to people. It's horrible. It's bullying. It's gaslighting in a way, isn't it? And uh, yeah, she's just done that. And also, isn't it really a bit of a worry for the rest of us that think that covid might be real that martin having felt like he's got the fucking covid has decided to front the tour and walk around york for four hours spreading the fucking thing jesus as we were all waiting to like join at the beginning of the tour martin went off on his live stream without like saying anything he kind of just like went away from us all he does do that he does do that i've seen that uh it makes me worry as well though that is he committing a was it still the case that you had to self-isolate? I don't know when the tour was. I don't know exactly what the date was. But in our country, we did have like a law that said that if you've got the COVID, you have to self-isolate. So maybe he didn't want to do a test because that might have shut down the tour. I don't know. But uh, it just seems a bit like, you know, seems a bit heavy here. Um, I don't know. And I find out later on that he was lying on that live stream about the situation to get donations from people. Um so basically he said that he's been sleeping in a cold wet van on like all tour and again i think these are embellishments i'd have to find the thing and verify what martin was saying but um i think he's she's making it sound like he's making it sound worse than it was but i do think that he's done this and that's why he's ill um he was actually staying in hotel rooms he no he wasn't he spent three nights in your van and if you got ill it might not just be the cold and wet it might be the people spreading the stuff around i only stayed in my van three times my van isn't cold and wet when the heating is on when i have fuel in the van it's great and we had fuel in the van on the tour um there was heating and um basically he admitted to me later in text messages when i scolded him for it that he did it for paypal donations edited but yeah i, I agree with this i think he probably does sort of bollocks up the truth a bit you know paint out like we need the money for the donations because that's his like modus operandi he talks a lot of shit on the internet to try and get paypal donations you do exactly the same thing jade don't you you do exactly the same thing you're not doing a mental health channel like helping people you're not doing a um advice line or like, i don't know what you do your, your channel though jade uh, um i suppose i'll just prove this i mean anyone can prove this can't we but anyone can prove this jade your channel jade is absolutely just exactly the same thing you're making these funny videos about funny conspiracy theories that uh, we've moved away from the flat earth because the flat earth is easily verifiable and debunkable through like physics and astronomy. So we've moved on to something that's more confusing for people, that's more dis disperse, more diffuse, and uh, you can talk endless shit about. It's this Tartaria stuff. You know, you think the buildings that are, that are below street level... Oh, look, there's an advert. Financial incentive. The more views you get on this, the more money you make. Hey up everybody, welcome back to another video. It's so great to have you. There you are with your microphone and your being a presenter. Um, so today I'm going to take you back to Confident. 30-year-old YouTube presenter, personality, wannabe. Looking at these buildings, talking shit about them. And then hoping people, you know, get into your stuff. I'm not going to debunk the Tartaria right now because, you know, we, we've seen Tartaria on other episodes and we can look at her channel more deeply. Um, but if you look at this, uh, where's your PayPal? <laughs> oh, no, you've got a button here, thanks. You've got a super thanks button. So you don't have to have a PayPal now. You've just got the YouTube direct. So there you go. You know, you've, you've got your monetization. You've got your, you're doing exactly the same thing, Jade. Exactly the same thing. 
I wanted to upload the video footage of Martin lying, but he has since scrubbed the first half of the York Live video. I have the text messages of him confessing. It was all lies for PayPal's. Okay. Like, right. This is a different thing, isn't it? This is a different thing. Martin, up to this point, has been vilified for all sorts of different things, but not this. <laughs> now, Martin is twisting his audience for money. He's trying to twist his audience for money. That's what I've always been saying he's been doing. That's what I just said Jade's been doing. I'm not trying to twist you watching this for money. You'll notice I've got a tip me button, yeah? But my idea is to create content with value so that you think there's something good here that you enjoy. Entertainment, but also interesting. Might learn a thing or two. You know, I'm learning stuff as we do these streams all the time. Um, so, you know, learning about different stuff in the world and getting a view on it. Entertainment with value. That's why we also do Mental Health Monday every Monday at 8pm GMT. We've got a separate channel for Mental Health Monday, uh, a separate YouTube channel called Mental Health Monday, but you'll see all the broadcasts on this live stream channel because they're live streamed and uploaded here. And uh, yeah, we're trying to create a mental health platform that, you know, I've had mental health struggles. You've had mental health struggles. We're trying to help each other through everything and create media with value that people maybe one day might stumble ac across on YouTube and it might help someone out and really change their life. Over the last year, we've changed a couple of lives, hopefully. One really big one that stuck in my mind was there was someone that was in care in Ireland and we found an advocacy group like a, a group of people who had been in care themselves who can advocate for people in care who are maybe without parents or um you know, things like that. So we found this important charity that can directly help them. We put them together and I hope that worked for them. I don't follow their story, you know, I don't know, but I hope that worked. You know, we're trying to create something with value anyway. That's what we're trying to do. And if you find it valuable, you'll come back and watch more. It will grow. And then these tippy donation things will help the channel to grow. I'm buying things with the tippy donations to set up a podcast studio, to set up a nice broadcasting computer a new camera, and then we're on to creating a media product that we can actually get sponsored. And once we can get it sponsored, I don't have to ask you for any tippies. It's just all a bonus if you do. Uh, so that's our structure. That's my business plan. I'm open and outwardly honest with it. I do want it to grow. I will monetize, but I will remove the monetization and the plea for tippies when we get a sponsor, if we can work towards that. That's my, that's my strategy. So uh, I'm doing something different. I'm not trying to confuse people for, for YouTube clicks, you know, uh, I'm doing something different, but she's basically accusing Martin of this here. And if Martin is doing this, it doesn't mean everything else she said is true, does it? It doesn't mean everything else she said is true. Everything else she said is all a bit different to this. Hola, so I booked a train to New Key for Tuesday, Jade. So this is, you can fake these, but I'm going to assume they're real for the purposes of this video, okay? I'm just going to assume they're real, but you can fake these. Why did you tell everyone you've been staying in a cold, wet van? That's why you're ill. Question mark, exclamation mark. You've been staying in hotels, Martin. That's so rude of you. Not a happy bunny about that, to be honest. Martin. Hiya. Uh, never meant all the time jadage. Was just fucked mind. Put it right for you. I don't really know what that means. It's okay. I'll just remember that next time you need somewhere to sleep. Don't want you getting ill in my horrid cold wet van some hands so what she that's <laughs> petulance isn't it oh no it's fine it's fine that you said that about my van now you can't sleep in my van so you've you fucked that then haven't you Martin? now you can't sleep in my van oh i wouldn't even be able to reply to that text i would never text her back again i'd think thank god she's angry with me because i don't want to talk to her i would never text her back again uh something else i'd like to say right <laughs> Ah, oh, it's about the fucking van again, isn't it? She's personally offended by the van being brought into question. The van shit. That's why she's offended. He said the van was shit. Not, not that he said her dad died, he's going to die, her dad died of COVID. She's not brought up that her dad died of COVID or supposedly of COVID or was killed in hospital or whatever she thinks. She's not brought that up. She's not upset about that. She's upset about the van. You can tell because that's what she's fucking said. <laughs> Mic drop. You see how I did that then? Mic drop. I, and I pulled my face because I'm making my point. That's what she was doing earlier. See, so I, I, I even do the body language because I'm a human being as well. Jesus, I need a top tip for the garden again. This is making me angry. She's such a 
uh, chuffer. Um, refresh old paint on fences and gates. Now is the ideal time to repaint, repair and paint any broken fences and gates and prepare them for the warmer months. You should always paint on a day where no rain is forecast all year and consider painting it on a day where the temperature is unlikely to reach above 10 degrees. Well, that's a bit specific. To prevent your new paint being damaged by mildew and rot, we recommend adding a layer of protective treatment to the fence before you begin work. Fair enough. Do a Tom Sawyer day and paint your fence. That would actually be really mentally satisfying. It, like Doing actual things, having a mental break from all these ideas and doing actual things, seeing the result at the end and saying, yeah, I did that. You know, that might be nice mentally as well. Good, good for your mental health. So that's made me feel better. We'll get back to this now. Right, Tar Jade, that's everybody having a go at me today. I deserve it all, I guess. So he's, he's now he's not happy with Jade because he's like, right, okay, I tried to say sorry and I'll put it right, but you've replied, because this is bullshit as well from her. He said, look, I never meant that. I'll try and put it right for you. And she's like, no, fuck you. I'll just take my van. She doesn't accept his apology. She doesn't want him to put it right. Right, Tar Jade, that's everyone having a go at me today. I deserve it all, I guess. Playing a bit of a victim sympathy card there. Playing a bit of a sympathy card. Oh, don't play the victim. She says she calls him out for it directly to his face or on the text, but she's called him out directly. So why does this make me angry? Because she's a chuffer. She's being mean. She's being twisty and evil. And I don't think Martin's a great chuffer himself. You know, he's using the YouTube for money and convincing people of rubbish to sell them a book. But this is on another level. Don't play the victim. It's me you've upset there with that comment, not the other way around. It was just a shock to hear such a rude comment from you about me. <laughs> I'd never have stay I'd have never have done that to you. I'm better than you. Plus, you stay well, she's doing it now. She's doing it now. She's posting the fucking text. She's doing it now. Uh, I'd have never done that to you. She's doing it now. It was just a shock to hear such a rude comment from you. I'd never done that to you. Plus, you stayed in my van one night when you were already ill. And you did have a lovely bed mad made. She, I think she, earlier, she told us she only slept on the, the, the ch -ch 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 pump up bed. Earlier, she lied to us and told him told us that she'd he'd only ever slept on the bed. I noticed it was a lie and it seemed weird, but now we know why, because he had a lovely bed. Or maybe she means the shit pump up bed. I don't know. But again, she's angry about the van. Might have laid the sympathy down, Jade, to get PayPal's. Don't take it so personal. I like your van. like It's like a boat. Right calm is needed. Sorry you're so upset. Very grown up, Martin. Look, he's saying he's wrong. I've laid the sympathy down to get PayPal's. You've called me out on it. Fine. Don't take it personally. I wasn't really dissing your van to you, to your face. I was doing the YouTube twist. So don't take it personally. It's not on you, Jade. I don't really hate your van. It's nice, your van. All right, I'm sorry you're upset. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Don't get too worked up in the comments. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Just don't get worked up. <laughs> What's wrong with that though, Jade? It doesn't seem terrible. It stays on the screen. Now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I saw that, Jade. So, yeah, that's that's when I realised the guy's a liar... He also said that he had... No, 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 no. That's not when you realise he's a liar. You've known he's a liar for a long time because you're telling the same lies on YouTube. Either that or you're equally as confused. And didn't you say that he'd lied previously about other stuff to do with the van? Like about sleeping in the van or... I don't know, man. I don't... That's when you realised he's a liar. Right then when he was twisting the audience for money. C word ending with D on that live stream and that made my mum think that she'd caught it because ending with D. I realised the guy's a liar. He also said that he had the C word ending with D on that live stream and that made my mum think that she'd caught it because she believes in all that nonsense. Nonsense. But she thinks that was true that her mum thought that. Uh, so that is now, again, this is, we're levelling at Martin, that Martin thought he had COVID, he said so on a live stream, and that's upset her mum. So Martin is a cunt because her mum is upset because of something he said on his own live stream about his own health. You can go and get fucked. You can go and get right fucked, can't you? Because what I say on my stream, 
that your mum doesn't have to watch has no bearing on your fucking mum. So if your mum gets cross about what I say, what me I'm saying now, I don't give a fuck. Right? And you can't say that I'm bad for that. <laughs> Obviously, I do care about people and their feelings out there. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this, would I? I don't know. Maybe I do give, give a fuck if your mum's upset. Maybe I shouldn't be so rude because it sounds quite arrogant of me. But you know what I'm saying. I don't think Martin should have to look out for your mum's feelings on his live stream. So she went out and ended up buying a load of self-tests to do. But I think what's worrying her and what's making her upset about this is that her mum is now upset with her because she's been hanging out with Mr. Covid. He's got the Covid. Your dad died of the Covid. What the fuck are you doing, Jade? You've brought it around here to me. Jade, get, like, get out. It's Martin's fault, Mum. We ended up having a big argument about it because I couldn't stand there watching my mum put those tests in her in upper nose because of what Martin lied about on a live stream. So I was horrified. We got into an argument and I had to leave. I was only meant to be staying around my mum's area in my van for just that few days. In We've got this going off now. Going off with the hands, the aggression. She can't contain it. I was only meant to be staying around my mum's area in my van for just that few days in between York and Newcastle whilst Martin goes home and recuperates. But we've seen this a lot as well when she uses her hand to like move things into compartments. I think she might have been pushing the, the story on there in a way. Uh, he's back there, you know, so these things feel true as well. I was planning on meeting him back in Newcastle and us finishing the tour together. So I had to leave that night when my mum was doing those home tests because I couldn't bear what was happening. So I drove. She couldn't bear what was happening. Yeah, you're right. She's not worried about her mum's feelings. She's worried about her own feelings. She can't bear the tests. A mum can do them. Mum's not worried. So now you can't bear it. It's your feelings. It's not that your mum's worried and you want to. It's, you know, okay, my mum's worried. My mum believes in COVID, so I'm going to have her do a test. It will put her mind at rest. I don't think those tests are very good, but, you know, I'll let her do it because it's what she wants to do, okay? Like, no, I'm so distressed. Mum, you can't take that test. Mum, don't take that fucking test. Like, don't tell your mum what to do. It's disrespectful. <laughs> Jesus, Jade, you're a, you're a fucking piece of work. As far as I could up towards Newcastle, um, I managed to get to the National Park just before it and park up in the middle of nowhere. I had no more money for fuel. I had no money at all in my bank. Um, I only had the fuel money that Martin gave me. Oh, I was going to say, this seems wrong. I have no money for fuel seemed wrong. It seemed like she's putting a piece of money aside with her hand. That's why I was doing this. I'm trying to get into her head. So she tells us a lie about money. Again, it's about money and it's about the van. Again, uh, she tells us a lie about money. And then she actually kind of tells us, the, like, people are telling lies sometimes can't help but tell the truth. It's weird. She kind of tells us the truth. She kind of, like, uh, um, qualifies her lie, in a way. I managed to get to the National Park just before it and park up in the middle of nowhere. I had no more money for fuel. I had no money at all in my bank. Um, I only had the fuel money that Martin gave me when he just left York. He sent me £100 on PayPal for the fuel money to get up to Newcastle. Um, so that's where it went. It went on the fuel to get up there. Oh, did it? Did it? Because I don't know if you can pay PayPal onto fuel. I don't know. That, I don't know. And later that Martin... But heavily edited, so I can't uh, I can't get into that. Too heavily edited. And then cancels the rest of the tour, despite saying he already booked his train tickets to come to Newcastle and everything. Um, this was probably because that night, after Martin left York, I sent India from Holistic Media. I sent her a really irate email. I was absolutely done with these people when I realised Martin was lying, to, lying on live stream to everybody for money. This is getting quite thick and fast now. And it's, I think, less, uh, like, now she's not making shit up about Martin. Now she's got this one thing, Martin's lying about people, things for money. That's true, obviously. And she's saying it. And now she's on about India and all this other stuff. It's coming a bit quicker. It's seeming more real, I think. And when I realise he's not a trustworthy person, I realise all the gossip and drama and lies he's been telling me about other people is not possibly real. Whoa. That's a bit of a big drop as well, isn't it? Now he's gossiping and telling you lies about other people. Maybe he is. Or maybe he's paranoid. Maybe you're gossiping about other people with him and you're having a conversation. It takes two to tango. I don't know. But this seems at least her truth. Real. I had to message this lady to try and find out what the heck's happening because she's the one with all the money and who knows what the heck's going on behind... The hand's gone over here now. The, the, the con job has been taken out of her hands. Someone's 
move the bag. And she's trying to reach for that. That like this is all is all what it's all about. She's managed to, like I said earlier, she's managed to corral Martin, use him like a puppet, get the money coming in for this tour, drive him around to where she wants to go to visit the people she wants to visit in these cities, have her van paid for, get her up to Scotland, fuck him off, uh, end up with a big YouTube channel, bigger than Martin's, uh, you know, like become the new big person, the new face. She wanted equal. Do you remember in the last episode she was pissed off that she wasn't on the key rings? So it's obvious. It's it's obvious what she's doing. And now India's involved and India's actually got more control. This shadow figure that I'm not in investigated yet. She's involved. The money's been moved. You've got to reach for that. Martin is now like written off. Martin's written off. Martin's not going to make her any more money. When she said she realized now he's dishonest earlier. I should have picked this up more. She said, I realize now he's dishonest. What she realized now is she's not going to get money out of him. So he's no longer useful. He served his purpose. He's written off. The money's in the bank account with India. I need to do something with India now. I need to get to India. In the scenes, other than Martin. So I sent her that email, and I think she sent that email to Martin. Then Martin decided to drop out of the whole tour because of that, because he couldn't handle the fact that I was basically saying, what the heck's happening here? So you sent an email to India talking about Martin behind his back. Martin's, she sent it straight to Martin. So India and Martin have got this open, honest communication line, but you're going behind his back. I don't know what it says in the email, but she sent it straight to Martin. Martin fucking turned around and walked. Do you remember earlier in the other broadcast, which was all choppy, which I've got to edit and put together for a, so you can see it without the choppiness, which I will do. Uh, the In the previous broadcast, we talked about... Uh, Sorry, what, I lost my train of thought there. Drop out of the whole tour because of that, because he couldn't handle the fact that I was basically saying, "What the heck's happening here?" Um. Shit! How did I lose my train of thought? What was I saying? Shit! 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 Other than Martin, so I sent her that email, and I think she sent that email to Martin. Then Martin decided to drop out of the whole tour. She sent the email to Martin, that, so she's got an open, honest relationship with Martin. She's been stabbing Martin behind the back to walk. Yeah. Um. I said in the previous episode when you're setting up, she said. She said, oh, he said, she said now, but she said it in a video and I've shown it on the internet. So it's not he said, she said, because she's there saying it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but she said that uh, the critical point here is that she said she wasn't happy with the organization of the tour. Early days from day one, she didn't think he, oh, staying in hotels, that's stupid. You should be in the van and this and that. And I said, if you don't like the way the business is being run and you're teamed up in it, you walk. You don't stick around for the long haul and wait for everything to go to shit. You think, this is a red flag, I'm going to walk. We had four times in the previous episode of Her Body Language where I said, wait, this is a moment where you should turn and walk. It's got to the point where Martin has walked. Martin has seen enough red flags about you, Jade. He doesn't want to do business with you anymore. He can't. You're trying to stitch him up. So he's walked away. Not with all the money. Not with his successful tour and his enjoyment that he wanted. Not with any of that, with COVID <laughs> and everyone hating him because of all the shit you're saying. But he's walked. So good on you, Martin. Prepared to walk away. That doesn't sound like someone who's controlling, who wants you for himself, who wouldn't let you talk to other boys, who is like, that doesn't sound like someone who's predatory, does it? Someone who'll walk away. Do you remember Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? Have you heard of them? Johnny Depp was hidden in the bathroom, wasn't he? He walked away because of that because he couldn't handle the fact that i was basically saying what the heck's happening here and she accuses him of not being able to handle it he's sick he's being stitched up he can't handle her honesty that's the problem it's not that she's a bitch and she's fucking him over it's that he can't handle it he's not a man enough to deal with her now again aggressive hand waving someone who's not man enough to deal with me and we're going to say that man has been bullying me and is predatory. The man that is scared to ring the woman up, so I had to do it. The man that didn't want to come out of the room because he's too feeble and weak, so fucking, you know, I'll do all the work. The man that, that walked away when he decided he didn't like what you were saying about him behind your back, behind his back. Didn't come up to you, when, didn't go ballistic like you do, like you obviously do because you said you do. Didn't go ballistic, just left. How does anyone believe this woman? How is anyone into this woman? It just don't work, does it? 
I could talk to the boys. You could, you'll do business with me, yeah, because you you know me. You'll know that I'll just fuck it up out of my own incompetence rather than out of any sense of malice. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to use the, the little boys' room. Well, I, I mean, it's not a room for little boys. I allow grown-ups. I don't have any little boys here. It's not like that. I'm not a Jimmy Savile. It's just a toilet. Right? I'm going to use the toilet. Don't get any funny ideas. All right, I'm just going to turn the volume down when I do it, though, because I don't want you to hear them screaming. And three, two, one, you're back in the room. Three, two, one, you're back in the room. The whole tour because of that, because he couldn't handle the fact that I was basically saying what the heck's happening here. And Martin told me he's cancelling the tour. I rang up India from Holistic Media and then um, between us, we arranged that I would go up to Edinburgh and I would finish the tour. And she sent me just enough fuel from the fund to get me to Edinburgh. I think she sent me just enough to get back again, but because the fuel... Heavily edited again, you know, heavily edited again. Uh, but still worrying body language, one shoulder up, looking up into the constructed, uh, broken up account because she's doing it piece by piece. Prices went up, it didn't really get me enough fuel anyway. I was up there with like no money for food or anything. I didn't have money for parking. Right, and this is her, this is her again all over. It, so fucking what? You didn't have any money. Now, that's got nothing to do with this, has it? Because you're running a... Like, you have to uh, beg people for money. No, you have to give them the receipts for the petrol you spent, and it goes into the business accounts, and then later on, you get reimbursed if reimbursal is appropriate. But if you're 50-50 on the business, you don't get reimbursed for your receipts. You just take that hit because you're part of the business that's trying to make a profit. And, like, you know, we all have to chip in and, and share the costs. Like, so it just... It's unbelievable that she should now be saying this shit again. That it's a problem. Like, what is India doing? Emailing her money for, for petrol. She's smiling here when she's saying it because she's actually getting the stuff she wants, the money. For my van and all sorts. So I had to spend some of the fuel money I had on some food whilst I was there. And luckily for me, the most amazing, beautiful soul helped me get back to um, Yorkshire to pick my cats up who were actually staying with my sister when I was on the tour. Right, so now your sister's looking after your cats. What are you doing having cats if you have a van to live in? What are you doing having cats if you have a van to live in? And what's your sister doing looking after them? I thought you hadn't got anywhere to stay and that no one would look after you and help you and that everything was a big issue for you on that front. But now you've got a sister who's got a house who's looking after your cats. I think you're there, aren't you? Is that where you are? At your sister's house? Is that what's happening? <laughs> so maybe you don't have to live in the van uh, with strange men. You know, maybe you can just, like, fucking live with your fucking sister on her drive with your cats. Um, so I had to get back to Yorkshire to get them. So it's the end of the tour, finished Edinburgh, finished Roslyn by myself, and I managed to get back to Yorkshire to get to my cats. And then it ends there. Like I didn't hear anything from Martin after that, and he knew I was in my van at this point. There's this face of disgust and indignance again. She displays this a lot. It's aggression and it's showing you that she thinks she's better than you. Because how dare he not do these things? Fucking piece of shit, disgusting people that they are. They don't, don't, they're not good like me. They haven't got the honour code I have. He wouldn't even. He didn't even give a shit about me when I was staying at my sister's house with my cats. What a f fucking asshole. Point that was unfinished. I mean, my van didn't have a shower. Oh my god, if she starts going on about the van here, if she starts going on about this fucking van here now, my van didn't have a shower, I did own a gas camping shower, but there was no plumbing in the van yet for it to work, I had to sell it all to get by since then, you're making some shit life decisions love aren't you, 
you're making some shit life decisions. Sell the whole fucking van, right? Get a job somewhere and then pay your fucking rent and live like a normal person. You don't have to have a fucking shit van. You're not Gabby Petito. Oh, you're not Gabby fucking Petito. Right? And who wants to live in a shit van in the UK? Doesn't have a fucking... You can't even have a wash. <laughs> That's, and she's so caught up on this. It's all about the fucking van again, isn't it? Big point well made there, love. Well done. I didn't have any plumbing for water. I had no more fuel to put in the heater. This is just poor me, poor me, poor me, isn't it? Begging and crying and pissing and moaning about the situation you put yourself in. And I couldn't drive the van to charge the electric because I needed fuel to drive. So, like, everything really was at a standstill. Me and my van okay. literally stranded. Right, okay, I, I understand that. And then when she edits this next one, she's got his face of panic and pursed lips. Bad signs, bad signs. But uh, what's really important here is that who gives a fuck about your fucking van, right? I don't give a fuck about your fucking van. Even if, right, even if I go 50-50 partners on a business with you, yeah? And what you want to do is take your profit and do up your van. And we do a business and at the end, I don't give a fuck about your van. Do what you want with your profit. If we fall into the, the negative and we've got a loss, you take the loss. I don't care what you're doing with your money. That's not my responsibility. It's not Martin's responsibility. It's not your viewer's responsibility. It's your responsibility if that's something you care about. I think it's fucking stupid. I wouldn't even give you a tenner to put into the van because I think it's wasting your money. But no, it doesn't matter. That's your choice. That's your big thing. And again, it's come to this 30 minutes into the video where she's on and on about this fucking van. And for some reason, she's trying to emotionally compel the idea into you that Martin is responsible for the van. And Martin, the evil predator, has predated her money away, stolen her van money. It's not even her money. She's not owed anything. She didn't work for a wage. There was no contract. None of that shit. She thinks she's 50-50 on a business, which we don't even know she is. We don't even know she shook hands. There's no actual legitimate business. There's no limited company. None of that shit. There's no bank account. There's no figures and writing down. None of that shit. She just wants what she's making up in her head as 50% of this. In the Dragon's Den, I've got 50% of this. And she wants to take it out the till. If you ran a business with her, in, like if you had a shop and you sold, I don't know, a van, right? And then someone gave you the cash and you put it in the till. She'd be like, right, half of that's mine. And you'd be like, no, it's fucking not. That's got to go in the till. It's got to go in the bank, love. No, half of that's mine. I need it for my van. I don't give a fuck, Jade. I don't give a fuck. See why I have to have these top tips for my garden? Pla plant seeds for flowers now. Plant seeds for flowers now. Early spring is a great time to tactically plant how you would like to. I've done that because we have an allotment up the road and... Uh, we do a bit of that, but bluebells and daffodils can be planted at the end of winter for a spring bloom. That's interesting. I'll remember that for next year. I'll try to. A winter planting, that might be cool, yeah. I have to just calm myself down with that. Because fucking hell. Um, and yeah, her views have tripled. She's now, because a lot of people don't want to watch Martin now because they think he's a sex predator pest pervert or something because she said it. So what are they going to watch? They're going to watch her because they've just been watching her. So YouTube's going to suggest it to them. She's twisting people. She's creating a narrative. Question the fucking narrative. Stop talking about your van. All these people should be questioning her. And they're not. I am. And it's obvious. And I have two cats as well. So, like, obviously I'm in distress at this point. And I was just hoping that somebody was going to... See what I mean? That, I'm able to spot these. Do you remember I said she looked panicked? And this point where she's actually talking about distress now. Turns out, for Jade, going destitute... Not having enough money to support yourself is distressing. Yeah, fuck yeah. So what are you going to do about it? Kick up a massive fucking stink on the internet until Martin gives me money. You're going to get a job, Jet? No, I'm going to I'm going to fucking kick up a massive. It's come to this. Before this, before this video, on the tour, the thing she was doing because she was desperate was the tour. When the tour started to look like it wasn't going to provide, she had to change tactics. Because she's still fucking desperate. And a really desperate person who's desperate for money might not be telling you the truth about all this shit when it comes to getting YouTube views, being the biggest one on YouTube, taking down Martin, getting your van sorted.
at a standstill. Me and my van literally stranded. And I have two cats as well, so like obviously I'm in distress at this point. And I was just hoping that somebody was gonna ring me. In those days in my van, like that. Those days in my van, my van, my van. She needs to get a t-shirt, doesn't she? She needs to sell uh, merchandise. Is she selling merchandise? Uh, she needs to sell merchandise and it needs to be all about that fucking van. You know, do you know what? I'm going to say this and it's going to sound fucking horrendous. So get ready. Okay, we're going to have to have the Stardew Valley back on from the start again because this is going to sound fucking horrendous. But get ready. <laughs> I have to say this now. I have to say this. And you have to understand this is a joke. I have to get my joke book out so you know I'm joking. So that you don't get cross and think, God, he said something awful. I'll get my joke book out. But... So it's from a joke book. So... I'm not saying it, it's from, a, it's from a joke book. I can now see why he beat that Gabby Petito's head in. <laughs> if she wouldn't stop going on about that fucking van. <laughs> it's from the joke book, it's not me. I'm not doing it. It's a joke. Obviously domestic violence is horrific. Thank God Martin never lowered himself. Thank God Martin never lowered himself to laying a hand on Jade in any of these situations. Thank God Martin is such a gentleman that he decided to walk away when shit got real. When he, when he found out that he couldn't trust her because someone proved it to him by sending him the email that she wrote that she's not showing us. When India did that, he walked away. India's trying to make sure that he trusts her, obviously, so she can rip him off, but I, he's walked away. Well done, Martin. Well done. Thank God he didn't lay a hand on her. I'd be interested, you know, she said he's been predatory and aggressive and all this. I, hmm, hmm. Yeah. Uh, without any heating and stuff. Um, they were really hard. There were times when I was literally just crying. I just thought, what the heck has he done? Like, I. <laughs> what the heck has he done? No, you weren't. You were thinking, what the heck have you done? You don't sit there crying in your van with no heating at the end of all this and think, God, what's Martin doing with his life? Do you? You think, God, what have I done? How come it's got to this? How did I fuck this up? What have I. I've been depressed. I've been there on my own, in the cold, in the dark. Like, one step away from the worst. What have I done? What am I doing myself? That's what you think in those moments. You do not think, what's Martin done? How dare he do this to me? You don't think that. You don't. I don't believe you. Murder. I don't believe you. Murder. Fuck around and leave you. Murder. I don't believe you. Murder, murder. Life's on the line. Don't want no part of me. Who's that? Man, that's, that's a rapper that I used to like. Anyway. I only ever did this tour and stuff to help us both get our heads. It was 50 cent. 50 really shitted on him. <laughs> yeah, 50 really spitted on him. <laughs> I want to hear that now, but obviously it'll ruin the, the stream for copyright, so. Heads above the water and then this guy's completely... I only ever did this tour and stuff to help us both get our heads above the water and then this... Oh, what? What? Sorry? Sorry, what, Jade? Did the big things come at the end? Did the big things come at the end? I promised you they would. What, Jade? What did you only ever do the tour for? Why did you only ever do this tour for what reason, Jade? Like, I only ever did this tour and stuff to help us both get our heads above the water and then this- To help us both get our heads above the water. You only ever did this tour to help us both- Lovely, aren't you, Jade? You're not just helping yourself now in your moment of desperation. You're helping me as well. Helping us both get our heads above water. But earlier in the video, Jade, you said you did this tour because you wanted to create a sense of community and bring people together and that it wasn't a financial thing. That's what you said. You leveled up Martin that he turned it into this moneymaker and that he changed the reason. You wanted to go to that chapel and you didn't even want to charge money. Do you remember? Now you're contradicting yourself. Now you only ever wanted to do this for money because you were struggling, destitute and desperate. And at the same time, you wanted to share that with Martin and give him 50% of the money. But earlier on in the video, Jade, you said that you wanted to get Martin involved because he was popular and people would come. Because you tried, you had this idea and it wasn't going to work on your own. You're not popular enough to do a tour. So now you need Martin to get the people coming in. So no wonder you're giving 50% of the money. He's owed more than that. If that's the business strategy, he should demand more. He's, he said to you, 50-50, lucky you, but that was foolish. But anyhow, if that's what he said, if that's what he said. But he said to you, I can't believe you, Jade. Why are you contradicting yourself? You can't have it both ways. You are clearly a liar. The thing I believe is that you did it for money. And I believe you only offered him the 50% to get him on board. 
and you thought that was a good deal for you. I don't think you were trying to give it to Martin for charity. Otherwise, you didn't need Martin. You could have just done the tour and then at the end give him 50% of it for charity. Martin, you stay home. I'll do it all on my own. I'll give you the charity. I'm such a good person. No, you needed Martin to do this tour and without him, you had nothing but a van and a debt. That's all you had. You had a piece of paper saying, I want to go to York and I want to go to this place and I want to go to Scotland. And, and on that, that's my little tour that I want to do on my van. How am I going to afford that? Oh, hello, Martin. Do you want to go on a little tour with me? We can make it about Tartaria. In fact, yeah, I can. And then I'm on tour with Martin and people will see my face and I'll be on the key rings. And I'm the new biggest one. If it didn't work out like that, what am I going to do? Now I'm in my van. I'm crying. I'm on my own. It's fucked. I'm fucking fed up with that Martin and that India. Fuck them. Right, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'm going to fucking kill them on the internet. I'm going to make a video and I'm going to put... I'll do my hair. I'll do my... I'm not going to be angry. I'll edit that bit out where I was angry. I'll edit that. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this and I'm going to... I'm going to bring up that thing about my dad with the COVID. Oh my God, this is going to be good. They're going to fucking hate Martin now. Hey, did you hear what Martin said? Did you hear what Martin said? Hey, you, have you heard what Martin said? Martin's a fucking cunt. Ooh, ooh, let's all just... Fuck off, Jade. Fuck off, Jade. Like, I only ever did this tour and stuff to help us both get our heads above the water. And then this guy's completely taken over it and taken it all for himself. And then when he didn't want to finish it, he went and just let me clean up the mess. So yeah, I'm holding out hope that he will um, send me the money before the conference. What? What money? What are you talking about? Because they've said I'm speaking in the conference. You're speaking in the conference? Well, then go and speak at the conference, invoice them for your fucking services, and expect the money, and if it doesn't turn up after 60 working days, put that through to small claims court. It won't cost you money. You'll get that done, and they'll either pay you, or they'll have the deal with the small claims court, whatever. You know, they'll be in debt to you. They'll pay you through some other means. Through the, you know, the court will enforce the payment. Or they might not be able to pay you. Maybe their business goes under, and you have to take that as a loss. That's business. Welcome to the real world. Um, in Birmingham so I thought okay that's two weeks away maybe I can survive through these next two weeks and then he'll give me something soon and then I can sort everything out and then because it's Martin's responsibility that you should eat for two weeks it's Martin's responsibility that after this tour is fucked up and you fucked it off and you've fallen out that you should eat I can go down to the conference and then I can go back up to Scotland and find a job um, so I'm waiting I had no credit at this point as well but, um... oh my god now we're down to no credit it's like a teenager um, he messaged me, but I couldn't reply because I had no credit. And I had you couldn't reply because I had no credit. It's bullshit. If you need to talk to someone, you'll find a way. You know, you might be able to get on the internet somewhere, like Chuffing McDonald's has got free Wi-Fi, hasn't it? And like, you know, anywhere and just use the internet. That's what you people talk to each other through, the internet. You've got a video channel. There's ways of communicating if you're desperate. There's ways, honestly. Honestly, don't just tell me you couldn't talk to him because you had no credit. It's his fault. It's Martin's fault. Martin should have called me, and because he didn't, I couldn't eat. So Martin's, it's Martin's responsibility to call me up to see if I'm eating, and if I'm not, he should send me money. Are you fucking insane? I had no data. I had to use everything wisely. I couldn't just be like... Um... You haven't used everything wisely. You've ended up in a fucking van on your own with nothing, that nobody likes you. Spending everything, because I didn't know when I was next going to get anything in. I was really blessed because... I could go and live with my sister at any part, at any moment. I was really blessed because at any moment I could go around my mom's house and she'd feed me. I was really blessed because I've actually got loads of stuff that I'm not telling you about. One of the guys from the tour, he... Oh, I found another man to fix me. Help me fix it. Found another man. He doesn't know me very well. I was able to convince him to give me things. Oh, it's, aren't I lovely? Cute I am. Yeah. Um, had my number and he called me and to see how I was doing after the tour and I told him everything that had happened. So there's a pattern forming here which Martin spotted in the pubs, which is she flirts with men and then she like sort of leverages that attraction they have to her. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, you might say I'm sexist here. You might say I'm sexist or you might agree with me. Fine, whatever. Like she flirts with men, she gets them a bit wound up and now she's got getting things like this guy's called her up, you know, he's not thinking she's going to like, he's thinking I might go for a date with this one. We'll go for a drink, maybe, you know, do normal things. She's thinking, I wonder if he'll pay for my van. Like, fuck off, Jade. And I told him about the fact that how I was stranded in my van. Can't shower, I've got no heating. Um, all that. Why did you tell him all that, Jade? Why did you tell him all that? 
a stranger told him all that. Just talking, just having a chat, really. Not, I'm not begging him for anything. I'm not trying to twist him in his emotions, seem like I'm vulnerable and... No. Isn't that all the same shit you told Martin at the start of the tour? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same shit, yeah. And he was, like, horrified because the way that Martin portrays everything is that everything's fine and dandy. And this is what was really going on behind the scenes. Well, there's no behind the scenes. This is your life, not Martin's life. So Martin portrays whatever he wants. You can portray whatever you want. You've got your own YouTube channel, your own cameras, your own phone. There's no bullshit here. Martin's not shutting you down. Martin's not stopping you from talking about things. This is totally on you. If you think that someone's, you know, creating some false narrative, why don't you pre present your... Oh, you do present your own narrative. Here it is, and we're questioning it. Um, so he, my friend that called me, he... Um he messaged Martin, he sent Martin an email. That was really worrying, that was a big lie signal, I'm gonna pick that one up because it's different from some of the others, is that oh, she purses her lips, he, um, she takes a big pause, looks up into Constructed, he, and there's a smack of the lips. I purse my lips a lot because I get dry when I'm talking and I, I do this on stream, but liars often will wanna stop the thing from coming out and reconsider their words. He messaged Martin, he sent Martin an email to um, see where I was and what was happening because I- Oh my God, now this guy is on Martin. Fuck off. Stop bullying Martin. You don't know him. She's twisting against you. I've had girlfriends, right? I remember this one girl and she was going on about her ex all the time, what a bastard her ex was. And it actually got me to the point. It actually got me to the point. Where's my big face? It got me to the point where I was anxious. Anxious and on edge because she'd been going on about this stuff. If I'd seen him, we were going to throw down. If I'd seen him, we were going to throw down. I, did, I didn't see him, never bumped into him. Didn't go looking for him because I'm not that sort of person. But if I'd seen him, I would have been forced to immediately say, look, I'm so fucking riled up about this. We're going to have to have words. You know what I'm saying? So it just, she did that to me. We could have just moved on, had a nice time. But she wouldn't stop going on about her fucking ex. We're, she's my ex now and I'm going on about her. So isn't it, the way it goes around comes around her. But I'm happier now. Oh, that's the Nintendo. This is the web browser. I'm happier now that someone's not fucking around with my emotions. You are, you have to watch reality TV. This is reality TV. So I, I, I won't be raging. Sorry, I am raging. Let's go to the garden. Let's go to the garden. Let's go to the garden. Plant lilies now to show off your borders in summer. That's nice. Right, get back to this. <laughs> I, you noticed I wasn't mentioned on the conference anymore. I've suddenly gone from being speaking in the conference to suddenly just being wiped off the scene. With yeah, that was when you sent an email to India shitting about with Martin and she sent it to Martin and they fucking cut you out because you're some malignant tumour. That's now you've been cut out. I see that, yeah. And unlucky for you, you haven't got any books, any records, any contracts, anything like that to say you're in business. So you just, you got to go. you got to walk, love. You might take it hard and you might think you're owed something, but you're not. Not legally. Not even professionally. Like, if we've had a big falling out, there's no money in the pot and you're fucking making demands and you're the problem, maybe we can see eye to eye on not seeing eye to eye and you just have to walk. Like, I still do not feel like she should be compensated for that. Without any mention. Um, no one told me any of this either. I wasn't told that I was taken off the, the, the itinerary for the conference. I didn't know as long as I... What I knew at this point was I'm supposed to be getting paid going down there. Again, I'm supposed to be getting paid. Why are you supposed to be getting paid all the time? What is this free money zone that she's in? Why does driving around in a fucking van invite... Like, people are coming in... Is she sucking dicks under the bridge or something? That's the only way this money should be flowing through that van window. Like, what are you doing on this tour that you should be getting these hundreds of pounds all through the... What's she fucking doing? Is she selling fucking... Is she selling a... Oh, just... I can't... Do you know what I'm saying? Why? I don't expect that in life. What kind of entitlement? What's going on? This is what winds me up, is this this attitude from her. She says it very barefaced to you, to us down the camera. It's part of her evidence against why Martin is a shitbag. Doing that and then going away again. My friend, he messaged Martin and... Now, he's saying that I said to him to get him to say to you... Ask him where I was and if I was okay, if he'd even checked on me, because he hadn't. <laughs> Martin messaged back, complete, like, lie. This is all in that, you know, you've seen her eyes again, you know, you know this is all bullshit. And uh, it's again, it's he said, she said, just show us the fucking messages then. Eyes about me, Discred trying to discredit my character to try and explain where I was. He didn't even explain where I was, actually. He didn't even admit that he didn't know where I am. He doesn't care where you are. None of us fucking do. 
Oh, here we go. Okay. Hiya, Jason, brother. I wish you didn't... Uh, hi, Martin. Okay, so this is the first one, yeah? Hi, Martin. I hope everything's okay at your end and you're prepared for the big conference. I'm not going to be able to make it, unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, but I'll be there in spirit and cheering from the sidelines. I noticed on India's latest post that Jade's not on the itinerary. Why is that? What's happened? Has anyone bothered to find out or ask how, how she is? Lots of question marks. That's where I feel the irate is... Has anyone bothered to find out? Like sign like an accusation, you haven't bothered to find out. But actually, right, it's worded like real matey. Yeah, you're right, mate. How you doing? You're right, mate. It's a bit two faced, isn't it? It's a bit two faced. If you don't like Martin, why are you being so nice to him? I don't know. Anyway, I noticed on India's latest post that Jade's not on the itinerary. Why is that? Uh, last time I spoke to her, she wasn't in a very good place and stuck in her van with no money. Ergo, no petrol. Might be a good idea to reach out, don't you think? <laughs> Fucking hell, she's. He, this guy, on Jade's behalf, is now pressuring Martin. So that Martin reaches out, sends her money for petrol. Fuck off. What's going on? Why should Martin give her the... What? <laughs> Maybe it might not be a good idea. Yeah. Anyway, good vibes for the conference. I'm sure it'll be epic and no doubt we'll cross paths again soon. Veil threat. Peace, light and love to everyone. Jason. Fuck off, Jason. Why have you done that for that woman? Hiya, Jason, brother. I wish I knew she didn't... Uh, before... Hang on. Hiya, Jason, brother. I wish I knew she don't answer me. So Martin's tried to contact her. She won't answer him. She said he, she weren't calling him. Maybe won't answer the texts because she got no text. She got no got no money. She can't answer a text. She can't reply. But he's tried to reach out and she won't answer. So he's done the right thing and left it. Done the right thing and left it. Now we're accusing him of being a bastard because he's not harassing her. Because he left it. We're accusing him of being a bastard because he's not harassing her. Not good. I really care for her, Jason. But... Uh, May, sorry, myself, I'm upset she let money go before a friendship. But she's young and she wants girly things. So he's upset with her because she hurt his feelings. And he's not that bothered about the money. Not good. I really care for her, Jason. But she's ignoring me over money and being ill, which I still am. I messaged again today. And yes, I'm concerned, obviously, Jace. Hope all's cool your end. And I'll do what I can to bring the magic the weekend and spread the love and hugs. Good to hear from you, brother. Indeed. Take care again. Talk soon. Hug. So I get this really upfront, straightforward thing from Martin, which is he's directly addressing what's been said, giving an honest, presumably honest account. I don't know. I've tried. Just saying it as it is, not fucking you about, not trying to pretend to be your friend and do all weird shit. Just answering you direct, telling you what, you know, his truth, I believe. Because it does seem to be true, doesn't it? I tried to talk to her. She didn't answer me back. She's had the money before the friendship. She's all about... All I've ever heard about is her fucking van and this money. She's not my friend anymore. She thinks I'm a cunt. I just can't be dealing with it anymore, Jace. Nice to see you anyway, Jace. You know, that's what I get from that. Uh, Martin's message to me received after Jason showed concern for my well-being. I didn't message Martin after the tour finished as I didn't have any phone credit. He'd left me penniless in an unfinished camper van with two cats. He's not your fucking husband! Oh my god! I'm going to have to go to the fucking... I'm going to have to go in the garden. I can't just read about the garden. I need to go in the garden. Set up a composting area. Yeah, we've got a compost bin. It's nice, actually. I know it sounds silly, and it's yucky, isn't it, compost? But, you know, you throw all your food waste in there, and all your stuff and all your rubbish that you don't want it. Like, you know, the stuff that's compostable, your tea bags and that. And then uh, next year, when you go and do the allotment, you dig out a bag of that, and you think, this is actually good manure. And I made that, essentially, through just being wasteful. <laughs> yeah, compost. Right, so he's left me penniless in an unfinished camper van. He wasn't married to you. He's not left you. You were never together. You made it very clear you didn't want to be in any sort of situation like that with Martin. He's not responsible for your fucking cats. Okay? He's not responsible for your fucking cats. Can you... Have I got my face in... No, you can see that on there. Two cats. He's not responsible for your cats. Nor your van. He seems to have forgotten that in this message. Ooh. Heartbreaker. You are. So you going, Jade. Fucking doing me in, you not talking to me like. Proper upsetting, Jade. You're stuck in my head. Can't stand it all this time. Ah, Sounds a bit pathetic, but Martin has obviously got romantic ideas about Jade. Calls her a heartbreaker. He's got her stuck in his head. He's not being mean to her. He's not calling her names. He's not calling her a bitch. 
he said it's he was emotionally he's alluding to being honest i guess alluding to the fact he's got emotional attachment he's not saying like you have to do this you have to do that i'm a predator i was a bit into you jade and it's made me upset that you're behaving like this and you just want to fuck off and live in scotland and you just want half the money and just to go i can't stand it it's in my head all the time it's doing my head in there's nothing wrong with that martin's fine with that that's that's fine that text that's absolutely fine He's telling you how he feels. He's not being angry and mean. It's, an, it's a reason why he doesn't want to continue talking to you and involving himself in this fucking drama. Please leave me alone, Jade. Please leave me alone. You know, that's what that reads like to me. Um, he basically just said that. He didn't even try to ring me to see if I was okay after I couldn't message him back because he's a fuck, he's right. He's the worst person in the world. This is Adolf Hitler we're talking about. So don't expect a voicemail. On the other hand, you did tell him to fucking leave you alone and never talk to you, didn't you? Um, he basically just said that I'm young and naive and all I wanted money for was to buy girly things, which is the most ridiculous, that, that is the most insult. Well, it's how he worded it in that, that message, but you know, it's, that's not the, the thing that we're critiquing on here, is it? His choice. What he thought you wanted the money for, doing up your van. Maybe he thinks the furnishings for your van are a bit girly. I don't know. Showers. Huh, girly showers. Maybe he's being funny. At the end of the day, it don't matter. That's not what he's... You're accusing him of being a predator. So it, you can't now start saying that, he, you know, what he said in this message is a bit, is a bit mean. Fuck off. ...thing to ever say to me. I'm not a teenager. I'm 30 years old. I've travelled... The oh, Oh, hang on, Jade. You're what? Sorry. That is the most insulting thing to ever say to me. I'm not a teenager. I'm 30 years old. I've travelled the world by myself and I've built my own van. Okay. You didn't build your own van, I don't think. Did you? <laughs> well, did you start with the wheels? But, Jade, you're now angry and you're showing us your aggression and your disbelief at this. Like, I built my own van. I'm, I'm so tough. I can travel the world myself and build my own van. So what the fuck are you doing being pushed around in a pub by Martin Leitka? How come when Martin slammed his drink down on that table, were you some scared little girl, Amber fucking heard? You've travelled the world in your van, you're 30 years old. Oh, it's cute. Oh, are we on the live stream now? Are we live now? Oh, look. I've watched one of your videos, Amber. I'm not going to get it up now. But there's like a bird in a video and you go, Oh, look at the cute little bird. <laughs> oh, I just always love cute birds. Fuck you, Amber. You're 30 years old and you've travelled the world in your van. You're putting on a show. You're putting on a facade, a fake. And the fake is that you're some naive little girl. That you're vulnerable. You just said you're not. You just said you're not. All through this testimony, you've painted Martin out to be weak. You said he was too weak to call India. You had to do it. You said that you went ballistic. You said Martin walked away. This is all wrong, Amber. <laughs> Jade, Amber Jade. It's all wrong. I've done a lot of things for myself. I'm not the type of woman that's just wanting to go around and want materialistic things or money. All oh, right, except you haven't stopped going on about materialistic things and money for the entire 30 minutes that we've been watching you. If I counted the number of times you mentioned your van, I would have to go outside and fucking murder an animal. <laughs> Obviously, I don't murder any animals. I'm vegan. Yeah, you got that in. Got that in. You have to say that to everyone all the time if you're vegan. Otherwise, you don't get a vegan card. I have to tell you I'm vegan. Otherwise, I can't get my vegan card. So I've got my card for this month. Uh, yeah, like it's just bullshit, isn't it, Amber? It's just bullshit. Although the subject of this video is money. Is oh, is it? Is it? Oh, well, it's time to close my eyes in stress as I cogitate that lie. Mystic things or money. Although the subject of this video is money. And that's surprise because I can't believe I just fucking said this. She didn't manage to edit this one out for some reason. Like, or is it the believe me look of although this is about money, although it's about money, actually it's about something else. Come on. Come on materialistic things or money although the subject of this video is money is there's a broader picture to this the fact that this guy's character is questionable and i think a lot of people need to be warned about what he's really like oh is it is that what it's about because i don't think his character is that questionable i've outlined how most men would probably behave in similar ways and i would commend them for it being a little bit jealous being a little bit angry being a little bit possessive not not a good look 
deciding to walk away, not putting his hands on you, not demanding you leave, fine. Deciding to walk away and never talk to you again, even better. Sending you a text saying he had feelings for you, but obviously he's realized that you don't have feelings for him. Let's just leave it at that. Job done. So I can't, I can't fault Martin on what your account of him is. I can see why you might think, if so, he said, right, this guy owes me money. He's supposed to pay me 750 quid. Where's my 750 quid? Oh, that's a bit of shit. I'm not going to lend him a tenner now. But from everything else you've said, hang on, I don't know if that's true, Amber, Jade. I don't know. You know, I, I feel like, you know, the rest of the shit you spun, it started to, all this video has done, Jade, has made me feel like you're a malicious liar and you're doing some sort of hate campaign to get something for yourself. It's made me more compassionate to Martin. And I started out thinking Martin was the liar. <laughs> I started out thinking that Martin was manipulating his audience for, for money, and that was bad. But this is a different level of bad. This is human manipulation on a one-to-one -one basis. This is a con job. This is a bullying campaign. And this is horrible, Jade. This is a person who inside, inside, oh, I just, I'm not going to say it. I think you need to go and do some work. I think you do need to fuck off in your van and do it for a good long time, and come back when you've had a think. That's what I'm going to say about that. Um, but yeah, no, he completely slandered me in this email, and it was absolutely disgusting. And then he sent me an email, like, a few minutes after he'd replied to my friend's email, with something completely different, really nice to me, asking me how I am. Show me the emails. All of a sudden, just because my friend... Actually, don't bother. Because, to be honest, if you're talking... Let's say, for example, you and me have had a falling out, yeah? And you're talking to one of our mates. We've got a shared friend. So you're talking to one of our mates. Oh, Scott's been all right, Chuffer. Oh, why don't you send him an email? You know, you've having that conversation. You, uh, say it's on email. Say you've sent an email to them saying, Scott's all right, Chuffer. And they've said to you, why don't you send an email to him saying, you know, are you all right? How's it going? Maybe we could work this out. You know, you know, right, try it. Like, okay, I'll try it like that, but I'm not sure it's going to work. And you send the email. They're two different emails. So it's fine to say one thing to somebody and one thing to you. Um, but you're not party to his fucking private thoughts and discussions with his friends. And nor should you be. But now you have seen into something different. He's concerned. He's, he's got these ideas. But he won't say to you, Hello, Jade. I've been thinking you're a cunt today. I think you're a right chuffer. Is he? Because where's that going to get anyone? So what Martin's done is not harassed you. He's not harassed you. He's decided to bitch about it to his friends instead. You know, get it off his chest to one of his friends and not harass you. Jesus. Friend emailed him. Martin wasn't going to email me before that. He was just going to blank me completely. Because to Martin, if I'm not making any fuss and I've just disappeared into the background, he gets away with everything he's done. No, no. It's that Martin can't deal with your shit anymore because you're a fucking hard work chuffer with no payoff. <laughs> There's no win. There's no friendship. You want the money. Uh, you're prepared to take more money than your value more money than you ever like they're not going to be left with anything and you're going to get paid you're not loyal you know do you see what i'm saying martin don't want to talk to you so i don't think it's even wrong what he's done i think it's good what he's done to not talk to you everyone will agree if he's a nasty sexual predator that not talking to you is something that you should enjoy so in total from the tour in bits and bobs that i got from martin add oh oh my god No. I mean, is this not blowing your mind? I'm just I'm not buffering. This is this is really just my my brain. I am putting it on a bit because I did watch her video once, but look at this. Look at this. You fucking liar. Martin Leaker, donation received £100. That's a lot of money. Mastercard, debit card, minus 300 Martin Leaker, plus 300 He's paid off your Mastercard. Received as Martin left York for fuel to Newcastle, she says. For the first one. I don't know what the second one is, though. He's paid, so she's using her credit card, debit card, sorry, MasterCard. Is that a credit card or a debit card? I don't know. I'm not, I don't have one of those, so I don't know. MasterCard, though. She's obviously got means of getting money without money. She's got herself in debt. Martin's paid it. That could be for fuel. That could be reasonable. Give me the receipts. I'll pay for your fuel. We'll put it in the business. That could be reasonable. I don't know what it's for. 
because it's not listed here where you spent it or, you know, I'm not seeing your receipts. All I'm seeing is that Martin is paying you money. He's giving you £100 there. He's giving you 300 there. That's 423, 430. He's giving you another 180 plus the nine to make it up for the, another 200. He's giving you like 600 pounds. Are you fucking shitting me? Martin, stop giving this girl money. Stop doing that. She's not owed any of this. Received after I asked when I will be paid the first time. So after you bitch and moan and piss at him, he's forced to give you money. You've got him into, you've done it in March and you've done it in February, February and March. So you've, you've done it twice. So now you think, Martin's your little fuel pump. Martin's your little money maker. I'll just put the fuel in. I'll just spend £300. How do you spend £300 on your debit, debit card? You can't put £300 of fuel in a van. Tell me if I'm wrong here. Tell me if I'm wrong in chat. Can you fill up your car or van to the tune of 300 quid? What are you spending 300 quid on? Was that the hotels? I don't know. But obviously she spent money on a card and he's just given her the money back. So he has paid it because that money, you're not entitled to it just because you spent it. Oh, by the way, boss, on my break today, I went to McDonald's. Here's the, here's the bill. <laughs> Fuck off, mate. I'm not paying for your lunch. <laughs> Unless it's written into your contract that you pay for my lunch and here's my bill. I don't know. But like, what is it? This, this is fucking awful. All this proves is that Martin's been doing his absolute best because we know he's not been getting the money. <laughs> this has come out of Martin's pocket. Martin has not been receiving all that ticket money. That India woman had it, didn't she? Jade said she did. <laughs> I'll have to follow that up. I've got to follow the paper trail for the money. I've got to try and follow that. I've got to see if we can find out at some point. Next episode ongoing. We're going to look into India and holistic media. That will be interesting if we can find anything out. But here is absolute dead eye headshot. Call of Duty headshot. Amber Jade is talking shit because <laughs> mine's paid a loads of money mine stop paying the money this stuff she ain't entitled to in the first place work it out at the end of your accounts what she's entitled to if she's even on the books you know but this shit man that's martin out the good of his heart trying to do what he thinks is right that's martin on a handshake at a party when he's drunk and stoned saying yeah i'll give you half the money you know that's martin just paying up when she's pissing and moaning because he cares because to, Mar to Martin, he knows he's, he don't have to give her this money. This is the thing. Martin knows he don't have to do this. But she's kicking up and pissing and moaning. So he's going to do it because, you know what? Martin does things for you. Money's not... As Martin can't afford the money. Martin's struggling for money as well. But he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. That is, for me, show proof that Martin... Okay, I said I'd do this. You put that... You've put £300 on your card. Fucking hell, Jade. All right, there's the money. You know, Martin's come through for you. Martin's come through. Martin is a man so of his word. Seek a black, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seek a black, man. Seek a black. In total, 500, oh, I'll just have to move this, 500 pounds, 100 pound off for fuel. I planned the tour. I drove us to all the tours and worked the day of the tours. That doesn't matter, Jade. Unless you're going to put your hours in on an hourly rate, which I've worked video jobs where I said, do you want to pay me for the day rate or hourly? Because hourly, if it goes late and I have to do all this, you might end up paying more. A day rate is this. Here are my invoices. Email me back. I'll come and work the job. You haven't done that. You're not getting an hourly rate. You're not getting paid hourly to drive the van. You're 50-50 because you are the driver. You can't have it both ways, Jade. You can't have it both ways. I planned the tour, I drove us to the tours, I worked the day of the tours, I even finished the tours Martin didn't do in capital, big, you know. Martin told me throughout the whole tour, throughout is one word, that I will get paid my half and not to worry. Yeah, he did, you know, Martin was positive and optimistic the whole time, do you remember? He's always like that. So I have since received another £97 from him, because your half is only your half of what's left at the end. And if they don't have lots of money, if you spent it all on your van, then you're splitting what's left. You're not getting your fuel money and then splitting it. That's not right. Take out the fuel money and then split. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't say, I need extra for fuel as well as the half. The half is from the profits. That's one of the costs. Martin told me half, uh, he's since received another £97 from one pay. He's still paying her after this video, bringing up the total to 620 quid. Can you believe that, man? She's had £600 out of this and she's still fucking going. 
You are shitting me, Jade. I can't. How can you deal with someone like that? Is there anyone here in chat who's a big Jade fan and didn't see this and think, what the fuck? You tell me if I'm wrong to think that because I feel like I've just given you a really honest feeling response to that. And I think that would be what everyone else feels like as well. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm different to everyone else in the world. Maybe I'm unique and different, special. Or maybe we've all got a lot in common. And maybe when you see that she's already had £600, 35 minutes into the video, this is what she should have put on first 10 seconds. These are the accounts. Martin's paid me this money. I'm still owed this. She hasn't got the accounts. She's just showing us. His, oh my God, man. She's, she's been raking it in. I haven't made that much money off this shit. Off my, this shit. I make I make a little bit of tippies and I save them for paying for what we're going to do in the future. I'm so lucky I'm not complaining. I've got subbies on Twitch and that actually financially contributes into my bank account and I think fucking hell thank God for that. But I'm not doing this sort of money just by saying to Martin fucking where's my 300 quid Martin I've already spent it. You can't spend it first and then demand it back like that unless you've actually got a business budget receipts you know fuel budget. You can't just say Martin I've spent 300 quid I am deserved it. It's mine. I'm owed it. Fucking hell. That's awful. Not all. Isn't it? Um, I'd only ever get a payment whenever I was asking about when we were actually going to get the payment from the tickets. Yeah, because you're not supposed to get paid from the tickets. That's just bullshit you made up. Um, he'd then send me a little bit afterwards to kind of keep me quiet. Because he's a nice guy and he thinks you're struggling, so he sent you money out of his own pocket to help you out. There was that last £100 in York that he sent me, but again, that was supposed to be for fuel for me to get from York to Newcastle. Well, then where's the receipt? Why hasn't it gone through the business books? It's out of his own pocket to help you out. And um, that wasn't for me. So it's the day of the conference. Not heard anything from Martin. So I decided the only way I can like get out what's happened was to confront Martin and India from Holistic Media. Oh my god, is she, did she go to the conference and have a row? Did she go to the conference? I don't know. She wouldn't be able to because she can't afford to move her van. Uh, write them a whole email. Oh, an email. To finish with the whole everything that's happened. Everything I've just explained to you guys. Yeah, because you are not going to turn up at the conference where you are outnumbered by people who think the same. Instead, you're going to start on your fucking hate campaign from a little Operation HQ. Aren't you? If you if I tell you what, man, I tell you what, if Martin owed me money for business, if I'd filmed just say like I filmed a video for him, I've got done my invoice and I've done the small claims and it hasn't worked out and he's pretended he hasn't got the money. My dad runs a roofing company and once you're not supposed to do this, so I shouldn't probably say it, but once and this is back in the day, so it's too late now, but um it, nobody paid for this job, they went and took the fucking roof off the house. They didn't go and beat anyone up, but they stripped the roof, you know, fuck you, I'm having that back. Like, but me, in my heart of hearts. I might be round there on the conference saying, right, Martin, fuck you, man. You think you're going to tell all these people what a good guy you are? I'd stand up in the conference and say, this fucker owes me money. Look, here's the receipts. Where's my fucking money? You know, kick off. No, she ain't even doing that because she's coward, really, isn't she? Because she's big bully when it's someone she can push around. But when it's a whole group of people that she might not know who they are and there's two of them and they're in on it together and, uh, well, in on it together, you know, supporting each other, then she's at a loss. So instead, she's going to start on this hate campaign. Guys here. Um, there's a little bit more detail in the emails to them because there's more personal issues, but um, yeah, it's pretty much what I've just told you. And uh, <clears throat> the I also sent it to two ladies that were on the tour as well because um, I wanted to get some more advice about the situation and to see what I should do. No, that's a lie. Like it's a misinterpretation of the truth. It, she's saying it very matter of fact with eyes to the camera because she's trying not to lie. But the reason that she sent that email to two ladies on the tour and not to everybody on the tour. The reason she selectively chose people is because she thinks they're the ones that she can manipulate with this story of sexual aggression most. If she sends it to everyone on the tour and they all come forward and say, Martin didn't do that, that's no good to you, is it? But selectively choosing people who you can manipulate to work up into a bandwagon of hate campaign, yeah, that sounds like you, Jade. I didn't know what to do. It's such a unique scenario. How do you even explain any of this to somebody? Well, you just did in 30 minutes. It's not that unique. It's someone's a fucking idiot 
and someone else is a fucking idiot. <laughs> and between them, they tried to set up this tour. I don't know, like, you know, so many people have like, tried to do it. I remember, actually, I was the fucking idiot once. Uh, I used to do local gigs at my, in my area. It's just me talking now. We've hit the three-hour mark. I'm allowed to go freestyle if I want. It's my stream. Uh, I was doing gigs in our local area. We used to be in bands. We did DJ decks and stuff like that, you know. And uh, the gigs were going all right, to be honest. I'd set up the system where we'd play the decks in the club. The people pay £3 to get in. I make the money. I pay the DJs. You know, it was going well. Then I went to university in Bristol. I'd done about two of those nights in my local town. Went to uni in Bristol. And I thought, I'll do the same thing here, man. This is a big town, big city, big clubs. You know, Studentsville. I'll do the same thing here. I rented out a club. I booked my DJs. I didn't get... I did all the same things. Flyers, networking. Didn't get the people in. The night was a bit of a... To my honest appraisal, a bit of a flop. Dead night. Other bu- places were busy. I was quiet. Not in my local town, because in my local town, there wasn't much going on. Bristol, I underestimated the market. Made a mistake. I lost my ass on that one. Paid for the room. Paid for the DJs. Didn't make any money. Bit of a shitter. Uh, yeah, so... I've forgotten what I was related to now. I've forgotten why that was my story. <laughs> Went to freestyle. Why that was my story. What was she saying? Because I didn't know what to do. It's such a unique scenario. Oh, a unique scenario. So there you go. It's not a unique scenario, is it? We all do it. We all try and be entrepreneurial and enterprising and underestimate the work involved and what has to happen. Some of us then start learning about business. Because then I went to university and did economics. And then I learned about, like, you know all sorts of things before opening up my own business because I had to know them because I actually had to have a business bank account and and, you know all that shit (laughs) had to know them before I did my own business I can see though why you might just be playing at bullshit and it might go wrong for you yeah how do you even explain any of this to somebody oh how do you explain this well you just have what you mean is how do you twist this to serve your purpose how do you get some money out of this how do you make this load of shit turn into a we love jade campaign or maybe a we hate martin campaign uh but yeah i didn't get a reply from india holistic media but oh yeah like loving the mist martin said he played sympathy for paypal absolutely we covered that martin his job what he does for a living his job is to talk bullshit on the internet so people give him paypal money it's similar to what i'm doing but i try and create value so that people give me tippies yeah and then eventually i'll use that money to create a media product that can be sponsored and you don't have to give me any more tippies if you don't want that's fine martin's different he's got this long-term plan of more people equals more money i say the bullshit they're idiots they give me money She's doing exactly the same thing on her channel. That's her strategy. She talks the bullshit. She gets the idiots watching. And then she gets the money. She's getting YouTube money. She's got YouTube money from this. She wants to be like Martin. So she's on the same tip, which is why she spotted him talking that bullshit. Normally, she wouldn't call him out on that. Normally, she'd let him talk shit online for money. But now, she's using it against him. Strange, that is. Because now she's trying to slander his character and make him into a bad person. If he lied about that to you, he's lying about everything. No. Martin embellishes the sympathy vote on stream in the same way as he embellishes the stories about rubbish history. It's all fairy tale nonsense. Oh, I'm poor and I'm having this trouble. Well, it's a bit real, but I'm spinning it out into a fairy tale. I don't know about this building. What's that? Oh, I've made a fairy tale. You know, similar ballpark. Whatever you believe or don't believe about this stuff, accept. They are on YouTube talking for money. That's a bottom line premise. So Martin is doing that, yeah. And so when he was on the thing, playing it up for money, yes, he was lying to his audience for money. That's what they're doing. That's what she does here in these videos. They're lies for money. At least spurious information for money. At least that. Some of them are outright, you know, wrong. Blackpool Tower was not some sort of antique, antiquated tech docking station. We know why, when, how it was built. We've got records, photographs, everything. So, like, you know, I'm not here to debunk all that shit now. But just accept that they're on YouTube speaking shit for money. Martin did the same thing on his thing yeah she would never have called him out for that before she hasn't been calling him out for that up to that point but all of a sudden it becomes in her interest now she's exposing him brilliant and that does not mean that martin has done this to her it doesn't mean martin has manipulated her and been predatory to her it means that martin will spin shit on the internet because there's a segregation there there's a separation martin is not directly conning his audience martin does not 
uh, when he talks to people one to one, he's friendly and personable. Um, but when he's on the internet, he can say, "Oh, if you're silly and daft and a bit rich, give me some money." But he's not going to go up to somebody and say, "Oh, you gave me a, 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 a you know, tenner in the change. It should have been twenty, was it? No, it, what, it should have been twenty. No, give me that back." And oh, I conned you, you fucker. You know, he's not like that. She's like that. She's been conning Martin, so she's used that idea that he did this one little bad thing to turn him into a, a, a villain. Predatory bastard. A predatory bastard who walked away from her, who never laid a hand on her, who never, like, you know, maybe he was angry at her once because he had feelings for her and she let him down. <laughs> and I think that's okay. And when that happened, he decided to walk away. <laughs> she's, she's, I've talked about it all over here. So yeah, I've spotted that one. Don't think I haven't. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't forgotten that one, yeah. I got a reply from the two ladies that were on the tour and they were both horrified. Um, the reply from Martin was... Of course they were horrified. You've tried to horrify them, like you're doing to us. And you did it to two ladies who you thought were most susceptible to that, not everyone. Really, it wasn't the best. Again, it was making Martin the victim in everything. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to grab a drink because my whistle needs wetting. We're going to push on to the end because it's a really long episode, but I want to just finish this now. You're being a good boy, Marlo. I'll give you one more hour of this and then, you know, maximum an hour and then I need to go and walk the dog. But we should be able to bang this out in an hour now, shouldn't we? We should be able to. Let me just check, check, Chuffy. Am I back? One more hour of this. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> On New Year's Eve, you told me you were going to be homeless. I did have no income to pay off. Hiya Jade, soaked in that all that for days. I wanted you at the conference, but I only got sent two hundred pounds the day before and paid from Lawrence and arrived only to find her no, you know, all this shit went down with the conference, didn't it? I wanted to send you money every day, Jade, but the conference was a fail. Only hundred and nine tickets sold. She says I say, he says he can't pay me as the conference was a flop, but I was supposed to be getting paid from the tour, which had already sold £5,000 worth of tickets, according to Martin previously. We've got no evidence they sold that many tickets. In fact, looking at the number of people on the tour, it didn't seem that many. So I've not seen that. Let's see the business books. If that's the case, you might get your 50% at the end of the working year. We've been through all that shit. So don't give me that shit, Jade. And the fact that he's sent telling you that he would pay you out the conference money shows you that Martin, out the good of his heart, would pay you out of his own money. Out of his own money, from his own thing. Not from the conference you did, from his own thing, because he just wants to help you. I can prove I was on my ass the whole time from my bank statement. And no, I never paid my last rent. Martin did pay his last rent. I made him go pay it. We were in Lincoln. He wasn't going to pay it until I found him a pay point and made sure he did pay. He seems to have forgotten this in his feel sorry for me mode. He paid the rent on the 8th of March. The email was sent 20th of April. Again, this is just a uh, like a minor discrepancy. He might be confused. He smokes a lot of weed. He might be confused or he might be deliberately trying to say bullshit. But the problem with this is that, again, it's hearsay, he said, she said, bullshit, and I can't see the actual evidence, and I don't think it really matters. Anyway, it's so sad, I'm forever unhappy, and I know why. You've got tools here, Jade. When are you getting them? Where are you? Not that you could stand the sight of me, but the right thing for me to do is offer you a gracious young lady refuge. If you want to camp here to sort yourself, you can. He's still being nice to her, isn't he? He's still sort of offering an olive branch. And saying that he's got feelings for her, if that's what you know, if that's what you wanted to do. Just saying, Jade, not that you've any faith in me. My tours were left at his home as I was supposed to be collecting them after I dropped Martin home after the tour. Obviously, obviously, him leaving early meant I couldn't come and get them. No money for fuel, etc. Him offering me refuge would be another way for him to get me stuck and reliant on him. Well, you don't have to go. I wouldn't go to his house, especially alone, ever again. Capital alone, ever again. That's suggesting that's really horrible. That's awful, right. See, so she put capital alone ever again there. This is important. When I was a fencing coach, uh, was it my fencing coach who taught me? So it was a teacher who taught me this, actually, a teacher, because I was always getting naughty. I had to go to the office, talk to the teachers all the time, in with the teacher, you know what I mean? Go and see Mr. Rennie at lunchtime. I think it was Mr. Rennie who taught me. He said, put the chair by the door, open the door. So I was like, put the chair by the door and open the door. It was cold, and I was sat there, and I was like, can I just go and close the door, because I'm cold? You know what I'm like. <laughs> 
I'm a chuffer. I'll say it if it needs to be said, whatever. And uh, Mr. Rennie said, no, we're leaving the door open. And that's because no one can ever say anything happened here because you uh, opened the chair. You know, I didn't get up and go over the door and open the chair. You put a chair in the door. You know, you've opened that. I've asked you to do it. Keep this above board. No one's going to say I've touched them. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's a smart thing, that is, to do that. Uh, so, conversely, uh, I remember once, this was with my fencing coach, I remember once someone made a joke about, like, you know, pedos or a joke about sex or something like that. But when we're having a beer after the, the competition, after the sports competition, we have a joke with our coach. In the club, while there's children around, you can't make that joke with the coach. The coach is in a position of um, not just authority, but responsibility. And he fucking shut that shit down. He was like, look, I'm not having this shit. We don't talk. He didn't say shit. He was, you know, growing up. and But he was like, do you know how important and serious these things are? They're not just jokes. They can turn a person's life to shit. He didn't say that. I'm paraphrasing. But they can, you know, they can turn a person's life to shit. They're not just jokes. All right? This is serious shit here. There's kids around. I'm not taking this shit. I'm shutting that down because he knew what was important, you know, and, and what he was going to let go as a little joke and a bit of messing about and what he was not going to have his character slandered with. Yeah, this is fucking awful. What she said, I wouldn't go to his house, especially alone ever again. Why not? Why has Martin made you feel so threatened? You can't go to his house alone. Are you saying he's a rapist? Are you saying he's aggressive? Like physically? Are you saying he's going to hurt you? What are you saying? Because Martin has never laid a hand on you. You've never accused him of that. Martin has never been sexually aggressive to you. He slept on a fucking camp bed in your van with you. He didn't rape you, did he? Right, you, you invited that man into your van to sleep on the floor. So at what point were you so scared of him that you didn't want to be alone with him? When did that start? Before you slept on the floor in the van or after? Like, what's going on, Jade? Why are you putting this capital alone? Because that is basically saying that he's a sexual predator. You might not say it, Jade, because you're a coward, because you're using language to twist people's emotions to put the seed in their mind. Those women that you sent this to, oh, it's put the seed in their mind. Alone. You wouldn't go alone. That's such a horrible thing. Girls, I've seen this. Now, sexist again, you can call me. You can call me that. But I've seen girls say things like this. Oh, I'm not going in there with him. And like, people look at the man. What, what's he like? What do you know? Why, why, what, you know? But maybe, Amber Heard, you're just talking shit. That's really nasty. And I'll tell you why it's nasty. Like I said about my fencing coach and my teacher. Because Martin's done the right thing. He's walked away. Martin's not twisted this situation to get you in his clutches. Martin's walked away. He's offered you solace and refuge here because he feels sad or whatever. But he's still pining for it or whatever. He's walked away. That's why you're separate. Martin is not trapping you. But to, for you to suggest that he's that sort of man, that's an actual defamation on his character. We know it, you know it, I know it, we all know it. That's a horrible thing to say. If you were in a crowded bar and some woman turned to her husband or turned to a man in the bar and said, I'm not going in there with, alone with him. The people in the bar would think, what's he done, that chuffer? You used to instinctively think it. That's what you've done to him. But for, we've been through the backstory and there's no reason to do that. That's horrible. Um, I've got to be quick. Okay, I've got to be quick. Uh, reminded that Martin told me there was five grand in ticket sales from the tour. Um, I'm not being a cunt, Jade. I've just been that skint like you. Always check Crafty Magpie. I sent a one by the grace of God. I had £300 PayPal. Take care. He's still sending her money. He's still sending her money on Crafty Magpie. Uh, reminded that Martin told me there was five grand in ticket sales from the tour. I mean, I don't know what he said, she said, you said, she said, bullshit. But thank God you've got a business and you can just look at the books. Why can you suddenly not pay me my half? It's, you don't get half of that. Why has no one explained that to the stupid... I was going to call her a name then. Why has no one explained that to you? You don't get half of that. That's not how business works. So you're well off the mark there, Jade. You're well off the mark. This is just evidence that you're wrong, Jade, and that you were a wrong -un. It's wait for him to give me what I was owed for the tour. You're not owed anything. And I've suffered through that waiting because he's put me in a situation where I was stranded with no heating. For real, no heating. I like his no, you're not. You've got your sister's house where the cats the are. See her hold her breath a bit and bite her lip here? That's bad body language. I'm only going to pick out the really standout body language moments now because I really want to whip through this and go and walk the dog, right? And I've suffered through that waiting because he's put me in a situation where I was stranded with no heating. For real, no heating. Not like his little lies on live stream trying to get sympathy. I was actually living through that. 
No, bullshit, which is why you're holding back a smile at this point. Bullshit. I call bullshit. You've got somewhere to stay. Your cats are there nice and warm. You sat by a radiator right fucking now. Bullshit. We have two cats as well. Not just me, there's two cats. So, um... Um, We should feel more sorry for Jade than we do for Martin because she's got two cats. Look at that half smile. That's a liar. That's a manipulator. Threw in the cats there, made it bigger than it was. That's her strategy. That's her... I've told you, that's her pattern. Statement, enlargement, exaggeration, even further lie to draw your... Draw your sympathy. When I did send him a text message just before the conference, actually, when I got credit again, I asked him when he thinks I'll be getting paid for the tour again. Yeah, of course, you got some credit so you can ask him for money because he's fucking paying. He's already paid you six hundred pounds. And he said that I've been on his mind every day, and it's shit, and that I will get sorted out. I promise, or something like that. I'll put the text message up. When will I be able to get paid? I've been stranded now with nowhere to go. I should have had something from all this. Tuesday, 24th of March. Oh, she's still fucking... Could you imagine if this pissing moaning was going on on your phone, what you'd say to that? Bugger, I'm sorry, Jade. I had to beg India for money because I'm proper skint three days ago. She's ignored me since. Jade, I promise I'll sort you out. I have lose... I will have a lose my shit today and sort something. It's ridiculous. I've been on my ass since I've been back. You've been constantly on my mind, Jade. My head's something, something. So, uh... Again, he doesn't tell her to fuck off even. So anyway, I'm at this point absolutely stranded because he's left. Because he's left me. It's not his responsibility. We've been through this. You're repeating it now. With no money. He's just done the tour and the conference. And, and the conference that you're not part of, remember? That you wanted to be no part of. And just like... And you see how it works. He's done the tour and the conference and I'll have to think up something now to make this sound worse and... A bit of a smile. She's well in her flow now, isn't she? The uh, compulsive, accom compulsive, accomplished liar. Effed me off. In my opinion. Aside. Luckily for me, um, the same person that emailed Martin asking me, uh, asking Martin if I was okay and stuff after the tour, he said I could come and stay with my van on his driveway. All right, so you've got another man that you can go and stay with. Bang, just like that. So that's lucky for you, isn't it? Because you've gone from one situation to the other just through conversation here but actually you were never in that bad situation because you could go and stay on that man's drive so why did you tell us that shit just a second ago for as long as i needed until i got back on my feet again which was absolutely amazing offer it was literally like an angel he's an angel martin offered you exactly the same thing exactly the same thing but he's a predatory sex pest who wanted to get you trapped in his house whereas this man who you don't actually know a new acquaintance, is, a new challenger is on the scene. A new acquaintance is on the scene, right? Get this. Jade's just told you that Martin offered her to stay at, her, at his house. And that because he did that, he was a sex aggressive... You know, she couldn't be alone with Martin. That was what a horrible thing for him to suggest. Now, a strange man she doesn't know has offered that for the same thing. And that's not a sexual aggression. That's just a, an angel. Fuck off, Jade. Saving me. And um, I'm really grateful for that. Like, absolutely. She did a big fake smile. If you're that man and she's staying at your house, she's using you and she's faking it. <laughs> big fake smile. And, um... and a kind of self-contented smile after that because the fake one is to the man, ha, huh, you're a nice man, I'm smiling at you. And the self-contented one is, yeah, I've used you. I'm really grateful And then, oh, better not do that. Oh, better not do that. Like, absolutely. Cannot believe it. It still feels surreal that I've been helped like this. And we've been waiting for some kind of response from Martin still about everything we. that's gone on. And I noticed the other day... Now it's a team effort. ...that Lawrence had actually posted a video of him and Martin on Lawrence's new boat. Like new boat? I don't know if Lawrence's boat is new. I don't know if he bought it. I don't know anything like that. She's now sort of, you know, implying that money's being spent. And being she's angry again, because remember, she gets the fucking worked up about the money. He bought. Like literally like Ooh. a bit. She's edited this in. Million pounds worth of ships and boats. Just the bit where he said that other boats were expensive. Oh. Like literally like a billion pounds worth of ships and boats and yachts. There's mine. There's Martin on my deck. 
Well done, Lawrence. It's great to have a hobby like that. Well done. Lawrence is fine. No problem with this. Don't see why it's incriminating in any way. I think she's implying that boats are expensive and this costs money and that Martin's swanning around behind her back when she's owed money. But it's bollocks. It's just Martin visiting his son. Stop trying to bring his son into it. That's fucking awful. Don't do that. That's a really slimy, low thing to do. Don't bring up Lawrence and bring Lawrence into it. That's really low. Yeah. Doing this. Doing this. Nothing. I know that might not have anything to do with Martin, but I still thought it was pretty rich of him to tell everybody that... I told See how she uses the word rich? ...told me that he had no money left, so he couldn't pay me, and then be seen sat on a private boat. There you go. How dare he? How dare he sit on a boat? ...in a marina. <laughs> and then I find out that he's actually telling everyone now that he's in Europe somewhere. <laughs> Wow, wow. Like, I tell you what, if you don't think this woman is well wrong and you're not spotting that, then you in your life are probably susceptible to these same sort of ploys, maybe. I don't know. I'm not dissing you if you like the woman. It's just, I can't live with that. I can't deal with that. Like we say, we know Martin's off in Central Europe now, don't we? We know that. So I'm going to skip over this bit because I can't... There's nothing in it. There's no body language. It's just her editing someone else's video in to say that he's in Central Europe. So we'll move... Something. He's not disclosed his location, but he's trying to claim that he's in Europe. Whether he's really there or not, I don't. I think he actually is. I think he's going to a thing in Croatia. No, but this guy told me that there was no money after the tour. So him being in Europe doesn't mean anything about whether there's money after the tour, does it? Because you're in Europe as well. You might not realise it, right? But Europe includes Great Britain, so you're in Europe as well. And it has no bearing on how much money the tour... Do you know what I mean? It's just fucking ridiculous. He's gone off to see some friends and get out of here. He explained on that other video that it's a lot cheaper out there. And that's why he's done it, because he can't afford things, because he's got no money. Jesus Christ, woman. He couldn't pay me because of it. And he couldn't pay me because the conference was a flop. But I wasn't supposed to be getting paid from... No, he didn't say he couldn't pay you because the conference was a flop. He said he couldn't... You didn't get anything out of the tour because you didn't get, you know, that, that was a flop. But the conference was him trying to just get money, just to give you money, just to be nice. He didn't say he couldn't pay you what you were owed because the conference was a flop. You're mis misrepresenting exactly the sort of stuff that we've just been showing, you've been showing us. On the conference money, the conference was nothing to do with me. The, anything to do with the conference was the conference. My money should have come out of the ticket sales for the tour. No, it shouldn't. It never did. It never no, it shouldn't. I hope you all realise, because I've said it a number of times now, that is is bang wrong you don't divide the, you don't work in a shop and put money in the till and at the end of the, the, the day you take your wages out of the till no you add up how much money's gone in you take out the costs then you allocate the resources it's definitely not that you take the money out of the till at the end of the day he could repay me later from other endeavors uh yeah so whether he's abroad or not we don't know but if he is abroad the absolute audacity of this man what to run away from you and your hate campaign to seek some solace to try and go and earn some money at a conference somewhere else that might be more successful than his own the audacity of the man to be pushed around and bullied by you i would contest that the one displayed contempt for not only the audience but also the people around her who have helped her to get where she is. The one showing contempt, which could de translate, therefore, as audacious behaviour. That, Amber Heard, that, Miss Amber Heard, I put it to you, is what you're doing. You're being audacious. This video, 40 minutes of shit, is audacious. Getting himself... And of course, the more audacious you are in your in your conjecture, the, the, the net becomes more of a filter for those who will believe audacious things. And those people are the ones you want to get because they're the, the suckers, aren't they? Amber Jade. Off to somewhere, making sure he has a roof over his head. He, he always has food, he always has weed, he always has a computer set up. Yeah, do you know what? And people are going to diss for the weed, right? I'll tell you something. People are going to diss for the weed, but... If you've got things you want in life, you might call them basic necessities. Some people factor in their drug addiction. Okay? Like some people factor. Some people drink. Some people like a drink. Everyone's got their own little thing they like to do. So I'm not, you know, and you, you know, I'll be honest with you, that I smoke weed. So like, I'm not going to be too heavy on that because it's me as well. But also, I just think, look, if he spent money on his food, his roof over his head and a little bit of weed, like, are they not just the basics that just to someone 
should have. Why should Martin not have that? Why should Martin not have that? That would be awful. If you, even if you think like this person screwed me over in business and this and that, you want them to live like a subservient servient level. You want them to not be afford to eat and not have a roof. No, for my fellow human being, even if you screw me over, I want the basic happiness of life for you. Because I forgive, I move on, I rise above it, and I don't want you to suffer. I'm not here to punish you. Even if you do wrong by me, I don't feel it's my job to meter out the punishment upon you. That would be some sort of sick, aggressive, you know, controlling thing to do, wouldn't it? No, I think we walk away and, you know, look for karma if you need be. But, you know, I might even mention karma in the other video, which is a point to make. He was hoping the world would fix this for him. The universe would fix it for him with karma. He doesn't have to go and meter out the punishment. On the other hand, she thinks she has to go and kick his head in. It's just fucked up, man. It's just fucked up. The guy never misses rent payments like he's telling you either. Like Fine. Martin's got a roof over his head and he's paying his rent. Okay. That's good for him. I'm happy for him. Like, the fact you haven't is why you're bitter. He can afford rent. He paid his rent on the tour. I had to make him go pay his rent because I was so concerned for him. He kept saying he's going to lose his house. He hasn't paid his rent yet. And I asked him, do you have the money for your rent? He said, yeah. I said, can you go pay it now? So I have to take... Again, this is hearsay though. I don't know anything about his living arrangements. I heard he said he lives in a council house. Some council properties you might have to pay rent on, some you might not. I don't know. But, you know, like I said, I just fucking hope he's all right. Bottom line. In the same way as I would hope she was all right if she wasn't spitting all this malicious shit. Once I've got over it, once she's come around, if she starts to, you know, become more... Um, if she starts to accept things, show some humility, then I might feel differently for her. It's hard to feel this about these people that do this shit, isn't it? I can find him a shop to go pay his rent in. And he kept coming out with excuses and I kept sending him back in. I actually went in with him and he paid it. But he had the audacity... Yeah, because you want to live at his house back then. Do you remember? You were living at his house. In the, in the email he sent me to say that he didn't pay his rent last month. And that's why he has no money to pay me. But yeah, I was with him when he paid his rent. So, like, the guy lies about that. He knows that's a... I think that's a confusion rather than a lie. But we'll see. I don't know. Because if he was with you when he paid it, it would seem weird to want to tell you he wasn't and didn't, wouldn't it? Like, that's like gaslighting on another level. But it doesn't sound like you're going to fall for that sort of shit, being as you're this person with the pointy finger and the arguing. So I wonder why he'd say that to you if it wasn't the case. I don't know, man. I don't know. Trigger people and that they're going to want to help him. This video isn't about money at this point. It's not about the money that he owes me that he spent on himself. It doesn't matter about that. What matters now is that people understand. That that's a joke, isn't it? That is a joke, isn't it? You know that's a joke, isn't it? Money that he owes me that he's... Why would you have to say this video is not about money unless you just spent 40 minutes talking about the fucking money and your van? I want to help him. This video isn't about money at this point. It's not about the money that he owes me that he spent on himself. It doesn't matter about that. What? She's shaking her head a lot because it does matter about that. She's telling you a lie. What matters now is that people understand that this man is a liar and he's not trustworthy. Oh. He has no integrity. Or because she's already fucked like... She's beyond being able to get that money. He's paid her what, you know, he's tried to. She thinks he's basically skint. She believes that. She, like, she's thinking, right, how, they, this has gone beyond that now. Now what can I do? Now I'm starting a hate campaign. Do you see what I mean? It should be about the money, but it's not. It's about a hate campaign. It's about trying to prove that he's some sort of sexual predator. I mean, what the fuck? Why have you jumped from that to that? Oh, because the money's run out. The money's run out. You've got no control. He's in another country. So, what are you going to do? Well, the van ain't fixing itself, so you better do something. Your loyalty. He doesn't understand what loyalty is. The amount of gossip and allegations he said about his friends to me, um, about his own son. That is gossip and allegations that you've just done there. You've just said that. You said he's doing that behind the scenes. You're doing it now. Everyone around him, people that are helping him. And now we're trying to lay it on at the end here. His son. He said that about his son. What kind of man would do that? Oh, just Jesus, Jade. Stop being a horror. Him, he bad talks everyone. You don't matter You're bad talking is, him. bad talk them the minute they go. I don't know what it is, why he does it. But this man has demons. And he needs to really look at himself. And try Edited to then. That because the way he's behaving now is absolutely dis destroying other people's lives. He left me with nothing. If it wasn't for the help I found on the tour. Bullshit. Bullshit. Big red flag bullshit. When you first spoke to Martin, you had nothing. He didn't leave you with nothing. He left you exactly as you started. And you didn't want to be around him. You didn't like the way he was behaving. 
So he walked away. You can't say he left you and walked away and also say he's a predator that wants to control you. That's not fair. On top of that, you started this thing with him. You said at the very start, it was your idea to do the tour. You went to Martin. You said, Martin, please do this thing with me. It finished shit. He's gone on and done the rest of his life. You can't, it, it's not, he's not responsible for you. He doesn't need to stay with you. You don't like, what's going on, Jade? Those lovely people, people that were genuine and could see what was happening. If it wasn't for them, I don't know where the heck I'd be right now. I'd still be stuck in a van with no heating and no food with two cats. Again, the van, the heat, and the cats. Like, and you're obviously not, because you've obviously got places to stay. So, what the fuck are you going on about? With a flat tire as well. I had a flat tire, which I didn't realise. Laying it on. So it was all just. He didn't seem to care. He didn't seem to understand the severity of the situation. He's left me and nothing. It's not that he doesn't. He didn't seem to care. It's that he doesn't care, and nor should he, and nor should we, because you just. I'm not going to say it again. I need to get him with the dog. That was the worst part. His. He didn't show any remorse afterwards. So yeah, guys. That's because he's done nothing wrong. And he did show remorse for the things he thought he'd done wrong. Martin clearly showed remorse for things that he thought he'd done wrong. Being a little bit, um, thinking that she was into him, so he got a bit jealous in the bar. Uh, he showed remorse for that in their video. Uh, remorse for the fact that he promised her that she'd do well out of this financially. You know, he, he raised her expectations and it didn't go the way he hoped and neither of them did well financially. Showed remorse, gave her money. I mean, he's done all these things. He said he's sorry. He's trying to leave her alone when she says, leave me alone. And he's getting criticised for that. <laughs> and she just said he showed no remorse, which was a lie. Jade, I've done you. You've been done. If everyone can't see this, that's on them. That's up to them. You know, go and give your money to who you want. Watch who you want. Like who you want. Subscribe to me. And also, bear in mind, all of our channel is not like this. So you're not going to get all this drama with these people all the time. But still, I provide valuable, interesting content. Uh, like top tips to pr transform your garden. So uh, you can hunt down and remove pests. I wouldn't really spray them with... I'd spray soapy water, I suppose, and scatter coffee. Um, I don't mind caterpillars, though. Actually, I quite like seeing them, even if they're on my plants that I'm growing. I'm like, that's going to be a butterfly. I've lost a few leaves. I've created a new butterfly. That's a good trade for me. So I like the caterpillars. See, it maraxes me. So stick around on my channel. Subscribe to me. Absolutely. Make sure, you know... Make sure. Thank you very much for watching. And again, don't yep. send anyone any abuse. Don't email anybody involved. Do not do any. She doesn't want other people involved because she wants to maintain control. But also, she doesn't want to start a hate campaign. But she's also talking about a hate campaign that she's starting. Of course, naming the things you don't want people to do is like reverse psychology, isn't it? So, but I think she's a little bit afraid as well that she might be uh, building a monster. Any of that, just take this information and just. Just take, she doesn't want you to go and be proactive and go and talk to Martin. Don't even click on his videos. Don't, just take this information and what is it you want us to do, Amber? Decide what you'll do from there. I don't want to influence you. I'm oh, you don't want to influence me? But you just spent 40 minutes influencing me. You want to be an influencer? Where did the word influence, influencers, online presence, bit of, you know, quick psychology. Oh, you want to be a big online person, influencer. That's how you see yourself. That's your vision for yourself. Obviously, you could call Martin an influencer, couldn't you? If you, you know, influencers. Yeah, influencers. I get it. So, but you don't want to influence me. You just spent 40 minutes doing it. I'm just being honest with what's happened to me to avoid anyone else having to go through the same stuff I've just had to go through these last few months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, big smile. A, a massive lie. <laughs> That's a clear tell. Of a massive lie. I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully a happier video than this. So yeah, happier. Yeah. Or more financially lucrative, hopefully, for you. Because your views weren't going up recently, were they? Well, now they are. So yeah, take care, guys. And there she goes. There she goes. Jade, you're a piece of work. It's been such a long stream, three and a 40 minutes. You know, next thing we've got to do is there's the uh, audio visual guy. He doesn't really honestly it doesn't really bear much consideration uh, Martin said he was doing a bad job so he's there to fight his corner and say he was doing a good job it's not really anything about Martin other than to say you know Martin said some shit about the audio visual and that was bullshit to try and get views and likes and money so that's what he says and he's driving when he's doing it so you can't body language him because he's driving um, and there's nothing really of any consequence in that but she promoted it because it was someone else on her side Martin's a fucking lying bastard he's lying about everything no no no, no, no. Yeah, 
So that's my penny worth today. What you can expect from me tomorrow, and I promise you this, is no more of this t tomorrow. So still come back and check it out, 2 p.m. GMT. And uh, still come back for tomorrow's 8 p.m. GMT uh, Mental Health Monday on Twitch. That's all tomorrow for Monday. Big day for me on Monday, two streams. But I just want to keep it light on Monday. You know, it's fucking Monday. You don't want to hear all these people pissing and moaning and complaining and arguing. You want something positive and light. <laughs> It's Monday. So I don't know what it is yet. I haven't planned it, but we'll do something tomorrow, 2 p.m. GMT. A shorter stream. It'll be more fun. If you've just discovered me through all this nonsense, consider subscribe. And uh, we will keep abreast of the flat earth drama Tartaria conspiracy uh, thing, I guess, as well. But I have to you know, we can't just do this every day because it would do your head in. I can't see how they live like this, to be honest. So, thank you all for being here. Thanks very much, Knuckles. Uh, thank you, Nanjo. Like, there's a lot of new people here today as well. And usually, when it's new people, I'm like, oh, hello, new person. It's all about you. But we, it's all about Jay today. And I didn't want to sort of like, you know, sort of really. <laughs> um, Knuckles, you've been here before as well, though, haven't you? Um, I didn't want to sort of like be like, uh, what's the word like tying you in with this bullshit necessarily um we could do a little bit of amber yeah we could do amber she's a very accomplished actress that's what i would say i've been watching her and what i would say she's a very accomplished actress so again if you're going to put someone on the stand and they're an actress like they know what's coming it's a lot harder to do it because they're actually deliberately trying to throw you off and and do their best to you know you might get little micro expressions here and there they're more likely than not to catch them out on things they say things they say and I think there are people doing a few of those good videos but yeah I can have a look um, so yeah we'll do something more more genteel and I might just be off the wall tomorrow and just do something random so and what I'm saying is we will come back to this <laughs> but uh, God it's been quite heavy hasn't it it's been quite heavy three and a half out three four, nearly four hours of this thanks for your subs I will see you now I'm going to go dog walking now and if you can't be good remember if you can't be good then you're naughty hmm if you can't be good, 